It's Tim's 60th anniversary for Roll Up the Rim to Win. I'm sorry, excuse me. It's Roll Up the Rim to Win. Roll Up the Rim to Win. And to celebrate, you can win some big prizes like the all-electric Volkswagen ID4, a sun-soaked Hilton vacation, or even some major cash with a daily jackpot of $10,000. We're going into a weekend. What would you do with ten grand in your checking account tonight? You have to spend it tonight. I have to spend it tonight? Yeah. Rent a car. Drive to San Diego. <laughs> 50 Timbits. Damn. All to myself. Love it. Sour Glaze. Well, okay. At, only Sour Glaze? No, that'd be insane. You got to have some. 50 of one kind of Timbit? Yeah. You could do it. You could. I would it do is all chocolate glaze. Country. Jesse, what would you do with 10,000 tonight? I don't think they make enough of one. Like, they don't. I don't think they have the stock of 50 of one kind. Well, there's only one way to find out, <laughs> yeah, and I well believe in it. science. <laughs> Play Roll Up the Rim to Win to buy 50 of one flavor of Timbit. <laughs> if you want to, or anything you want, with the $10,000 jackpot, daily jackpot, sponsored by Tim's Financial. Now, you can earn rolls on your Tim's favorites, including hot or iced coffee, breakfast sandwiches, loaded bowls, and more. Make sure you play in the Tim's app. Uh, you can down download those in the App Store or Google Play. It's it's Tim's 60th anniversary of roll, roll up the rim to win. Jesse doesn't do it. Jesse didn't. No, do it. I can't roll my arms. You can't roll your arms. No, okay, I can't do it. Well, you've got Sorry. till March 31st to figure it out because that's when <laughs> roll up the rim to win ends. Uh, remember to check uh, rules apply. Canon only. No purchase necessary for contest entry. Visit the Tim's app for details. Let's start the show. <laughs> Jesse Blake. Gentle on the Tim's Cups, gentlemen. Yes. Gentle. Very gentle. Gentle. Genteel, if you will. Adam, you look outside. It's snowing. It's a beautiful day. Mm hmm. You know? Yeah. But it's Friday today. Right. It's not like what it'll be in two days, which is Sunday. Today? Bloody Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Are you bringing up the U2 thing? Yes. Wow. I was going to go through as many wow. U2 songs as I could before you realized what I was doing. Well, it's... And you got two. Okay. Maddie, was it a good bit? Did it make you laugh and not cringe? Yeah. High five. Listen, High five for the good bit. A mixture of both. Yeah. A mixture of both? High five. Listen. That's great. They, I'm, I'm thrilled for them. I still stick to my point, which is the U2 sphere didn't make them win this much. Well, If, Adam, if it did, it literally then did. Never, then you can never it literally go, did, never, Adam. You know what? No team should ever do anything fun during the season again. No. Then they would never I'm, lose no, a game. Adam, Man, what happened? So crazy. What happened was Barry Trot said, get your head out of your damn ass. And it worked. Whoa. Whoa. It worked. He he went, that's old school dad. Yeah. Get yeah. your head out of your ass. And what happened? 14 0 and 2. Listen, I want to say, I want to say, I won't. I won't because it's no, not true. I, it it's is true. It's objectively and not true. Here's why it's true. Okay, because Barry Trotz yeah. is like, hey, you know, I, you, you know, the uh, the trainers and the mm -hmm. team doctors and the equipment guys, those guys can't go see you too. And then the they National can. Predators are like, you know what, Barry, you're right. Let us reward you with going 14-0 into it. It can't just be the fact that the West has been garbage nope. outside of the playoff team. Nope. Adam. Garbage. Adam. Adam. Speaking Nobody of garbage. make the playoffs in the West. Speaking of garbage. That is what you called the Nashville Predators. They were. And they're not anymore. Everybody. How come? Everybody yep. in the West. Come on. Adam, be honest do, with do yourself. You, do you know who they've beaten during this streak? Give it to me. Colorado. Oh. Winnipeg. Oh. Buffalo, who's charging for a playoff spot. Yeah, Buffalo. Minnesota, who's their competition. Okay. Like, they beat legitimately good teams. Montreal in overtime. Uh, oh, wait. No, they lost to them. Yeah, that's... Jesse uh, went back too that's, far. That's the free square. Damn it. But, oh, they beat... Vegas, oh, man, they beat Ottawa Vegas, and Anaheim. L.A. Like, they beat legitimate teams here. Mm -hmm. I'm just no, saying. There's no argument. And you know what, man? If you want to chalk it up to you two, then as I said... Never see a concert during the season again. Don't go out for dinner You're right. with the team. Definitely don't reward team employees who don't make millions of dollars. That that's for sure the thing. You're, you're that's what you got to make sure. Absolutely. That please penalize right the guys making sixty grand, lugging their equipment around. I had a that source is, tell me get you. It's going to put you on a winning streak. You might even win the cup. I had a source tell me they retroactively took away their Christmas bonuses. Today. I bet they did. That's, yeah. That's that's how they know they're going to win. And made their kids give back all the preds. Uh, you know what benefits? Screw that. They're gone. Oh, yeah, and they also they're can't gone. go to the dentist anymore. 100%. But they're 14-0-2. Every once in a while, 
you need to be told by someone to smarten up. You just oh, need good dad terms. <laughs> you need or a little no. good dad. Term. I I got another one for you. You need a little kick in the rear end. Oh man! You know what my mom used to say? Pull up your boots. Yep. You no, need, no, too old no, 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 my no. boots. Too yeah. old. I think we're finding out some things about you. <laughs> oh. That that is too old of a per, of a parental term. Is it? Jesse is pulling out nothing but the nineties. Mm -hmm. Okay, right what here. did you pull out? You're, what, you're, you're gonna smarten up here. Smarten and up. Mm -hmm. What happened was they got told to smarten up, and what did they do? They smartened up. They pulled up their worked. bootstraps, Jesse. It worked. I'm happy for them. I don't I think you I, are. I, I love at the all. city of Nashville. I'm not, I don't think I you love. Are. I think there's a lot of built up hate for Ryan O'Reilly. You got right. No, now. all right. No, I don't have any hate for Ryan O'Reilly. I'm a little. I st I'm still weird about how he left and that interview that it he is gave. Weird. It was weird, and no one made anything of it. But that's something we should have made Here, something of. Wait, no. This is for the listeners, okay? Give Everyone between about 42 and 28. What sounds more like something that you heard when you were growing up? <laughs> hey, pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Uh, you're still fixing Or <laughs> get your head out of your ass. My parents that tried one. to Get do your it. head out of yeah, your that ass. One, so, that weirdly one, enough, yeah. in my house, ass was considered a swear word. Really? Yeah, there was no ass. Um, stupid was considered a swear word in my house until we got in the car. And then everybody it was, was all the colors of the rainbow. <laughs> and I knew of every ever, word by grade one. Have you ever seen a Christmas story with the yeah. the, 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 the the Red Rider BB gun with rifle or whatever? whatever everyone and he says, like, oh, fudge. And he's like, only I didn't say fudge. I said the word, the big one. And then he said the F word. And and his mom is like washing his mouth out with soap, which was a thing people did. Yes. And uh, and uh, what was hilarious about that is he's like, he, he's like. I had to tell her that Fuller, his friend, said it rather than my dad every time he got in the car, right? Because right. it, it, he's like, he's like, it's, I didn't, I don't want to say that I learned it from dad, but I did, and it's kind of true. That's where you learn to to curse. It's, That's where it's you when your parents are in traffic. Words. That's where you learn to get your head out of your ass. Yeah. And what was the other one? Or your took us. Smarten up. In my Smarten up. Opinion. Yeah, that's a good one. I got took us. Uh, Roman Yossi, like Evan Bouchard. There's a guy who's smart enough. Ooh. Evan Bouchard, I put in the in the in North Shore of the conversation. Boo. Kale McCarr. Yes. Uh, Quinn Hughes, obviously, is probably the front runner right now, but Ooh. Roman Yossi. He threw a hit. Roman Yossi Roman needs Yossi. the respect put on his name for this winning streak and how he's a point a game player right now as a defenseman. Does Roman Yossi eventually get a Revenant Norris trophy? Like, does he eventually get... Mm. Like, because he's going to... Like, does he have one? I don't think he does. A Norris trophy? Mm -hmm. Unless he's the reigning Norris trophy winner. That'd be hilarious. No, no that, that's Eric Carlson. Because he had 100, 100 points. points yeah. Roman Yossi's going to retire. Roman knows, he has one. In, he uh, does? Yeah, 2020. That's probably oh, why that's remember. why I don't yeah. remember it. Yeah, 2020, Roman Yossi in 69 games had 65 points, 16 goals, 49 assists. He finished number one uh, in Norris Trophy voting. Well, no wonder I don't remember it. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, because I was going to say, he's going to retire, and he's not going to have one, and it's going to be really weird. But he has one, so never mind. I, like, sitting here right now looking at this, I don't even remember that they gave out trophies during that I pandemic. I do season. not remember Did they do a Zoom, or how do they do that? I, I have no idea okay. that this happened. Who won anything? Uh, Harp Who won the heart? Harp Trophy's probably McDavid. Like it's probably. I hope so. One of the years. I don't know. I don't know. We can look <laughs> I it have up. No idea. <laughs> That's wow. All right, you know that what, is Jesse? such a gap. Let's do a little trivia? trivia. Let's do yeah. some trivia. Okay. Let's fire up a Friday with some trivia. All right. Hold now, on. Now, if give you're me, worried about Steve looking over at Jesse's screen and getting a bit of an I edge, he can't see. He can't see. <laughs> He can't. see. I cannot. LASIK, I, my friend. I'm looking directly at it. Can't see it. Okay. Your eyes have to be as bad for several years in a row, like they can't get worse. You have to bottom out and then you can get the laser thing. Yeah. Someone told me that you smell your eyeballs. Well, you and you have to keep your eyeballs open the entire time. Uh, no, I don't want to. I don't know. I think I'll just wear glasses. I think, honestly, my parents both got it and they're like, it's the best. We're going to do Hart, Lady Bing, Vesna, Calder, Art Ross, Norris, Con Smythe. Love it. Okay, it's ready. 20, you, 20. Each, you each get a guess. You get one guest to just submit it, and then uh, Maddie take tallies. Whoever's the leading point getter at the end of the trophy guessing competition wins. All right? Got it. Heart trophy. It's got to be McDavid. Dreisaitl. 
One point to Adam Wilde, Leon Dreisaitl. That was the Dreisaitl year. <laughs> he had a crazy year. He did. And I want to say McDavid was injured. for 110 yeah. points uh, for <laughs> Dreisaitl. That's so crazy. Yeah. In like 70 games? No, 50. Was it no, like, wait, no, no, no. no, no. 50 Yo was the next one. Oh, Yo Yosi had 69 Oh, games. sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Wow. All right, Lady nice. Bing. 2020 Lady Bing. <laughs> Virgil Memorial Ryan. Trophy winner. Ryan O'Reilly. Nathan McKinnon. Ah, uh, wow. That's wow. no points for anybody. Someone even tweeted that at me yesterday because I had a Lady Bing tweet. And I, and I was just like, I, you're making that up, I think. It's kind of crazy because Nathan, I've never seen Nathan McKinnon as like a gentlemanly player. No, not no. at all. <laughs> Which is kind of wild that he won that. I yeah. think it's just he didn't take penalties. Right, yeah, because it's always the lowest amount of penalties, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's like, uh, did he play gentlemanly or am I looking at the statute? Yeah, he had less, he's good and yeah. he didn't take a lot of penalties. No, he's no. perfectly gentlemanly if you don't have cards. He had 12 pims, so... Wow. Well, okay. There you go. That's amazing. Which is the highest among the last five winners. Mm, how yeah. dare he? Kopitar won it last year with four. Kyle, Kyle Connor won it the so four. So what you're saying is Nathan McKinnon is a fraud. Is oh, that what bit. you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Nathan Fraud Kinnon. Yeah, King, the King I Fraud. Yes. King Fraud McKinnon. All right. Vesna Trophy. Steve, you're up first. In 2020. Friggin' <laughs> uh, uh, Andre Vasilevsky. Adam? U UC Soros. Connor Hellebuck. Oh, oh okay. no points again. All right. That's fine. The Calder Memorial Trophy okay. in 2020 went to this 21 year old. Who is it? Damn it. So I was, my first <laughs> thought was who went first overall in 2019, but they were 21. Oh, was that, I, wasn't I, I that Lafreniere anyway? I shouldn't have given you <laughs> no. that hint. Uh, Adam, you're up first. No, yeah. it wouldn't have been Lafreniere. That's what I'm saying. Is that, but Lafreniere went number one overall in 19, didn't he? Uh, no, I think he was 20, wasn't he? Adam, you're up first. Or was first. that Owen Power? Okay. COVID ruined my memory. I have such a good memory, it, except for that part. I'm an etch a sketch. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I have no, I have no concept. So this is going to be a guess. 21 year old then. That means he's 24 now, and he's good at hockey. I have, uh, I have absolutely no idea. You're I, gonna have to submit a guess. I'm gonna say. No, I don't. <laughs> um, who was Cole it? Caulfield. It's, it's no, not your turn. it's not your turn. Yeah, it is. <laughs> just give it. A, just wait a second. <laughs> like, <what's, laughs> I can't. I can't ever. <laughs> Seth Jarvis, Jesse. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 he's not. Kale McCarr. Oh, oh wow! Oh, wow. Yeah. How do? First off, I just want to ask: How did they keep Kale McCarr out of the NHL till he was twenty-one? I don't know. How the hell did that happen? Uh, like the, that's crazy. The Calder Trophy winners going back in order: Matty Beniers, Moore, Cider, uh, Kaprizov, Makar, Pedersen, Barzell, Matthews. Wow, there you go. All deserved. All great picks. Art Ross, Steve, you're up first. Got to be Drysaddle. Adam, I think Drysaddle. Drysaddle. That's a point to each. I think it's two one. Adam, right, Matty? I think that's my first point. Yep, two one. <laughs> uh, James Norris Memorial Trophy. You both know it's Yossi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Con Smythe winner. 2020. That one. That's a tough one. Because I I'm thinking about a player. I think that one was Headman. See, I was I was wondering was I know that he only played like a shift and he scored a goal, but was Stamkos? that was no. it the Stamkos thing? No. <laughs> Imagine, yeah, no, that'd be like, crazy. That, Holy I mean, crap. honestly, you could make an argument. <laughs> he was the most effective player with the ice time given. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say Kucherov. Oh no, you know what? No, I'm gonna say Vasilevsky. If you're going Headman, I'm going Vasilevsky. I don't know. Is that your guess? Yeah, Headman. Correct. Oh, we're tied. So we'll, uh, we'll go to a uh, bonus question. Mm. Who won the Rocket Richard Trophy? Now, mm -hmm. this is important. In 2020, it was a tie. So I will accept if you guess either of the two that tied for the Richard Trophy, that will be a correct answer. Okay. okay Matthews had 47. And that for was For some not, reason, no. I know that. I'm going to say it was Matthews Pasta. I only need one answer. You gotta. You said me. they tied. There's there's oh. two there's two names. You need to submit one of them. I submit Matthews, but it's Matthews Pasta. Okay, I'll go Pasta then. Adam Wild wins. Matthews did not tie, but Pasta did. No! <laughs> How many goals did he have? Who did he tie with? Uh, Ovechkin. 
Oh, Ovechkin that was had, gonna be my other guess. Ovechkin believe it or not, Ovechkin had forty-eight. Pasta had forty-eight. Wow, Matthews, Adam, listen, it doesn't enough. happen much, but I Rats, damn, Steve, trivia. you gave that away. Yeah, damn, <laughs> yeah. I really I, had it. Had yeah. he not said Pasternak, my answer was gonna be Ovechkin. We, we, we oh, know. well, there you we'll, go. We never know. We'll never. know. We'll never know. We'll never know, we'll we'll never know. know. dude. Twenty twenty. Yeah. yeah. Holy. Now yeah. I, I have a, a a listener question that I felt it was important to get in early in the show. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is from Landon, and she says, "Hi, hi." Does Steve know that? Yep. Yeah. Does Steve know that Hyman has 48 goals? And does Steve know that Zach Hyman is going to hit 50 Saturday versus the Leafs? Oh, I've known that since I saw it on the schedule. And okay, so here's this is going to be very annoying if it happens, mm -hmm. but I've I've been around long enough that I can see it. I can see it in the distance. Zach Hyman is going to score two goals to hit 50 on Saturday, and the Oilers will win. Matthews won't score. So that means Hyman will pull to within, I think it's seven of Matthews. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> a section of hockey fandom is going to say, wouldn't it be funny if Hyman passed Matthews? It would be funny. It's it, You have to admit, it would be. Funny to whomst? <laughs> mm? To 31 other fans. Yeah, that's fair. That's more than fair. It would be fun. We have to we have to be honest. About we that. have to be very honest about um, that. I have to say though, and we'll we'll get into the Leafs Caps game in a second. Uh, if they keep deploying the lines the, the way that they've been deploying them, maybe that's not so much of a problem. I uh, I am enjoying the well, with the exception of the Nashville Predators, the Adam Wild Vindication Tour. Well, with Maximum Domi. For, listen, for every step back I take, I take a step forward. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll talk about Maximus Domius. Uh, in a second, or Dominus. Hmm. Uh, but um, I want to I want to first mention uh, the thing that happened yesterday, which was a complete shock. Oh, the although it shouldn't be a shock, but it was. Um, Tom Wilson. I don't know if you saw this. I was shocked. Tom Wilson hit Noah Gregor from behind. Objectively, he did. Well, like oh, you mean before the stick? Yeah, and then swung a stick. And now the 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 word was that maybe Noah Gregor speared him a little bit with the butt end of his it, stick. No, it was it was the he like speared him with the with the toe right right in the, right in the boobie. So it's two two guys being competitive and doing in a hockey six, stuff. Three game in a six three game it was and, six three. And then Tom Wilson right hand swings this thing and look at this. Look what's about to happen here. Noah Gregor's life is flashing before his. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Tom Wilson. I didn't realize his hair had gotten so long. Wow. You if didn't you're, know that was coming up. It was an edit. If you were listening, uh, <laughs> it's, they're talking about uh, the scene at the end of the first Lord of the Rings <laughs> where the orcs are chasing them, uh, the fellowship. Um, but yeah, so Tom Wilson just absolutely rocks uh, Noah Gregor in the face, uh, uh, chips a couple of teeth. Um, I, I counted three. And, but but not like he doesn't like knock them out. He just kind of it's the annoying one where it's like your teeth are didn't shorter than they used to be. Yeah. So like Gregor. OK, Adam, you've done teeth stuff. Well, like, I've chipped teeth multiple yeah. times. Yeah. What do you do? Like when they don't get knocked out, but there's part of them missing. What do well, you do? Well, for, for what you do is you're going to have to go if you're playing hockey without a mask on, you're going to have to go to the dentist. And because because what happens is crazy because your teeth are super smooth because your your tongue. Right. Yeah. So when you. When you chip them like that, it, it's like really your tongue is on it and it feels like it's sandpaper. Right. So you're, you're going to have to go get that smoothed out by a dentist. Ugh. And then after the season, you may want to look at getting those veneers like what I have. What, so he wouldn't get them yanked, you don't think? I don't think you need to. And the thing is, is that if you go get them yanked, then you open yourself up to a whole bunch of other things. It's better to keep the roots of the tooth in there and just get them covered up. He, Jesse, just... Uh, like the, what? A, what? He uh, whacked he the whacked. dog shit out of that man, <laughs> and like yeah. when when they announced in person hearing, I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. And then I watched it. A f like the more I watch it, the more I'm like, that should maybe be the biggest suspension of the year. Now I want to say like, that after this, it it's like Tom Wilson lost whack! his mind for a split yeah. second. Then he grabs it and goes, oh fuck, I'm so sorry. Yeah. You so you'll see it here. He's like apologizing right as it hits his, yeah. hits his face. So I was texting with Ian Oland of uh, RMNB about this. The Russian machine. Yeah, Russian machine. The the Capitals blog, <laughs> and I said it happened in five steps. Mm -hmm. The first one was, hey, f you. Because he just got speared in the chest. Number two was, hi yeah. <laughs> Number three was, F, I shouldn't have done that. Number four was, F, I'm sorry. Number five was, okay, but in my defense. Mm. 
Yeah. Because he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It, look, 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 look at him, look at him. Yeah. He's got his glove. He's apologizing <laughs> mid-play. It looks like, like, oh my what? gosh, yeah. I'm so sorry. The puck Long- is somewhere else, yeah. right? Yeah. The play's still going on. But then he goes to the ref, he's like, I was, ah, ah. And like, yeah. he was comforting him. And like, he was so apologetic yeah. that if I'm not mistaken, he was assessed a, a five-minute major and it was reduced to a double minor. Yeah, it's double minor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which... I think the reason it's that really funny. The reason that I think we all felt like we weren't paying as close attention to it at the time is because of the way we always human beings. You can't help it. Even the refs do this. You judge it on the reaction of the players, totally. and and you're like, oh, he's apologetic, so it must have been a mistake. Well, I don't think it was a mistake. I think it was it was legit. But I also think afterwards he was like, man, I instantly regretted that. In oh. real time, it looks a hundred percent accidental. Yes. like it does not look like Tom Wilson is intending to do to do this whack stick in the in the middle of his face, but it looks after you watch it in slow mo that there's a little bit of intent to whack the guy. You see it on his face that there was intent. Yeah, that he's a little upset and he's swinging the stick, and it's just you can't do that. So like, the other thing yeah. I wanted I wanted to say about this is, um, uh, technically speaking, I believe with Tom Wilson's suspension history, um, because it's been so long. It, he doesn't count as a repeat offender. How many in this suspensions instance? do you need to have on your record before it's impossible for you to not be a repeat offender? When was, That's you, absurd. Do you know when his last one I was? don't know. A Tom Wilson. Uh, he had the really long one. I'm looking it up. For hitting Oscar Sundquist. That was the year they won the cup. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know when his last one was. Well, no. So he was fined, which is... Um, He's Supplemental been, discipline. He was fined right. for that New York Rangers fiasco, and I think that was in 2021. Yeah, it was. So here's here's what USA Today has. Uh, Wilson has history with the league. He's been suspended five times previously, including once for 20 games, which was reduced to 14 games after the appeal. I think that was the Sunquist hit. Yes. Uh, and then his last suspension was for seven games for boarding in 2021. So he does not count as a repeat offender. Uh, so, other but, than a $5,000 fine in 2020, 2021 that led to a brawl, there was some sort of roughing thing. Which is he's got a He's got a clean record by NHL standards. Which is how long? That is 18 months. I think if, you've not, if you're suspended a couple of times within 18 months, then they kind of throw the book at you. But after right. that, and that's a PA decision, by the way. Yeah. The NHL PA would have fought for that. I think, there, I think when we watch back our favorite commentator in his video... Uh, High sticking history. Oh, yes. um, we're gonna get a, a history. You think we're gonna yes. get a history? I don't think we're gonna get a no history. I think our shirt is gonna be wrong and it's gonna be history. Now, the um, uh, the Zoom meeting is going to happen some point today, probably in the next couple of hours or so. So, as of this recording right now, we don't know what this is gonna be. Mm-hmm. But you know, being offered it in person means that it can go over five. But based on what we saw with Morgan Riley and David Perron. I can't imagine that it goes over five. Well, I can't even. Was six. I, Perron was six. Okay, fair. Yeah, okay. Riley but was five. I just feel like I think this is a three or a four. I think it's five. Do you really? I think it's five on the dot. It makes sense. So, and to clear this up, because someone asked me, uh, an in-person hearing is not an automatic five. No, it is the option yes. of going over five. Yeah. Um, but there've there's been at least one instance where they didn't. This is like this is a really consequential decision here. Um, like Wilson, Wilson has 17 goals, which isn't that great. And 32 points, which isn't that great, but like, that's a half a point a game player. Mm -hmm. And he's Tom Wilson. Like, you know, he's not there just for, um, what he does on the score sheet. The Capitals are fighting for their playoff lives right now. Yep. Like, does this potentially cost them a playoff spot? And I'm serious. Well, I mean, I know he was an all-star this year, but I think Tom Wilson's best production was he? Yeah, he was. Um, <laughs> I think his best production days are behind him, if I'm being honest. Like, ah, look at his, I, I think still just removing one of your top forwards is... He creates room. No is, uh, is going to be consequential to their little run here. Because if it is five games, or even if it's four, it's if the suspension started today, it'd be Hurricanes, Jets, Red Wings, who they are in the fight for for the final wildcard spot, and then Leafs. Like, those are important games, and you want Tom Wilson for that. There's a lot... I think Steve's, like, bang on here. There's a lot of, like, schedule impact on their season here if he gets suspended. And he's at, he's actually more important than I realized. Mm-hmm. Because no one on this team scores. No. Ovechkin has obviously scored a shitload recently. What what was it? 15 goals in 22 games. Yeah, but that's after four months of doing nothing. Right. So the leading scorer, like Nylander just passed 80 points. 
How, mu- how much does the leading scorer on the Caps have? It's two guys. They're tied. Uh, Ovechkin and Strom. How much do they have? 40? They have 54 points. Oh, okay. In that's bad. 65 and 68 Not great. games. Yeah. They By the way, also- Neil Leonard just passed 90 points. Oh, my God. That's crazy. So uh, they're tied for the team leading goals with 23. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the third highest goal scorer is Anthony Mantha, who's not there anymore because they traded him. <laughs> so number three now is Tom Wilson. Their their current goal scorer from this season doesn't play for them. Their, their, their current third, third highest goal scorer on their team doesn't play for does them. Does not play for them. He has more <laughs> points. Uh, he has more goals and points this season than Tom Wilson as a capital. As a capital, yes. As a capital, um, in 10 fewer games, but Wilson is still the fourth leading goal scorer left on the team. He is their highest scoring right winger. Wow. Based on With 120 penalty. Wow. Points. Based on how wow. the Capitals have played so far this season in just terms of like sheer numbers, they're the least deserving of the playoff spot amongst the Red Wings and all the teams chasing them. So it's wild. I don't know if like this is the big thing that doesn't allow them to get in, but they've been fighting just to be there right now. So we'll see how this goes, but it's good. It's I think it's huge if they miss them for four plus games. This is, this is one of the strangest, uh, like, Department of Player Safety things I think I've ever encountered because uh, it happened to it's an in person hearing for something that happened to a leaf. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't worked up about it when it happened. I didn't really see anyone worked up about it when it happened. It wasn't until the next day that the replay started going around and people went, This is nuts, right? Yeah. Like, this is insane, yep. right? And even like in talking to Capitals fans, they're like, Well, and then they watch it and they're like, Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's like, nuts. It's nuts. It's I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. I listen, you don't have to think he's a bad guy. He's a monster. He's not. He meant to do it. I do believe he meant to do it. And he didn't mean to do it in the, like he didn't mean to hit him in the face and knock out his teeth. Maybe Man, just shoulder, like, I think, dude, you you wielded your like that should have had the Wii tennis music behind it. Like I think you wielded you, your stick like a mace. You have to give him the same leeway that you would give Morgan Riley in a situation with Ridley Grigg, where Morgan Riley did not mean to go after his head. You know, in that instance, Morgan Riley isn't saying, I'm gonna chop off Ridley right. Grigg's head. I'm trying to get him in the shoulder, something that looks a little bit or Matthews Darlene. Same thing. Yeah. It's it, you can't say that. Tom Wilson is trying to whack because no, but no NHL player is trying to do that. No, unless it's, it's you're getting at fifty games. Suspended. They'd be in jail. Exactly, they'd exactly. be in jail if like, they meant to. Do even stuff like even that. the Trubo one, you know, like that's not. I'm going after the face. Well, like even Trent Frederick, who's not afraid of anybody, didn't really do anything mm-hmm. after that. No, like he got whacked in the <laughs> head, and he was. There was a moment where he's like, do you fucking mean to do that? Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, what the hell? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, and did was, you even get like two minutes on he that? He got what? fined! Yeah. Oh, did he get two minutes no, on, on the play? play? Yeah. I don't know. No, it's did because he, he got fined because it was an accident. Oh, yeah. Who freaking cares? Oh, so. man, listen, it's an accident. He didn't mean to. So... So, so the, got, the the point was, I it, Tom Wilson intended to do a wax stick, yes. but not at the face, probably at the body. Like you, now you've got you've got two completely different ends of the spectrum here, <laughs> where you got Leaf fans going, well, how is this not at least as bad as what Morgan Riley did? Yeah, and then you got the other end, which is okay, but Truba got five thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, I I criticize the Department of Player Safety a lot. Um, for, you know, being too lenient or too harsh. I've had a full day to think about how I feel about this. I still don't know. Mm. I still don't know where this should land. Like, Gustav Nyquist, I keep bringing this up. He speared, I think it was Jared Spurgeon in the face. It's crazy if you go back and watch it. And you watch it and you're like, this is a 20 gamer. And I think he got six. and Because the... It was an accident argument takes you so far because you watch it and you go, if he did this on purpose, he's a psycho who deserves to be in jail. Yeah. So you almost have to take him at his word because you wouldn't want to think that somebody would do that to somebody. Yeah. Else. Oh, like we should terminate your contract. Yeah. Like, like we're t- like, I'm trying to think of like, it's in- not safe to have you out there in front of, with other people. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm trying to think of in my lifetime, how many on ice incidents have ever been investigated by police. Just the Bertuzzi one. Bertuzzi, I want to say there was something with Luke Richardson, like early 90s. Mm-hmm. And 
And was there anything? I know uh, 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 Eugene Melnick wanted um, Matt Cook investigated. I don't think they ever well, did. Well, Eugene wanted a lot of things. Yeah, people called the cops on Zidane Ochara for the Pacioretty stuff, but it wasn't investigated. Like, anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm going way too far. But I, what, I, what I think the whole point is here yes. is that the league surprised everybody and probably did the right thing. Mm-hmm. And that is the that's the most surprising thing is that we all would have expected oh yeah he's gonna get two games and you know whatever I didn't they, expect the thing I thought it'd be a fine to yeah be honest. yeah and 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 maybe a little bit of outrage outrage but I think at this point Leaf fans are sort of used to it the fact that they did what we would have expected a responsible player safety department to do is the story here mm-hmm. and sure. and I think that um, I think that that's positive and I wondered if it had something to do with the GM meetings. And the reason I say that oh. is because they're all in Florida together. Mm-hmm. Fridge reported on 32 Thoughts. They actually set up a situation room in the hotel in Florida. And although the meeting that was supposed to be this big showdown between the GMs and player safety ended up being somewhat cordial, mm-hmm. apparently wasn't the the crazy... Yeah, what, did, what did we think was going to happen? Royal Rumble? Well, like- I, they were making it seem like, oh, there's a, there's a comet coming and it's crazy and get ready. Um, and, and yeah, Kyle Davidson walking up to George Peros and going, Hey, F you. Well, <laughs> and what they said was there's going to be more general manager participation and ex- explanation of things in yeah. the future. So yeah. improving communication, which isn't surprising because the league goes, no, we're doing it this way. And we're not going to tell you why. Me. Um, I think that if Peros has to look at, uh, anybody from the Leafs the next day, cause you, you, you say Kyle Davidson, what about, how about Brendan Shanahan? You want? You think and Paris wants to, wants to look Shanahan in the eye and, and say, "Yeah, no, it's cool." I think that probably played into it. I think the GM meetings probably played into it. I think that player safety internally is aware that it's not just the fans that are upset with them; it's the general managers. You know what can't be forgotten, and a lot of people forget this about the Riley thing. Brad Treliving had a press conference scheduled, and someone stopped. I don't him. know who was like Brad. Spend the money on something else. <laughs> Brad, buy yourself something nice. <laughs> Probably could have bought himself a Porsche with what he was going to You could have bought like two Lexuses and gone to a parking lot and played bumper cars <laughs> with them. <laughs> with the money that he was going <laughs> to find. the money that he... Yes. I'm dying. One day I hope we get to interview him. We've never got the chance to interview a, anybody from the Leafs here. Um, but... Uh, That's not true. You had William Lagason. I had Lagason. I had Lagason with Walsh. Yeah. But like the they're Leafs, like no the he, least he was on SD the least do their them. their media tour or whatever and it's like we're gonna do Sportsnet we're gonna do TSN and nobody else and so and they own the team we yeah. did this previously. I know I still don't like they it. own the I team still don't like it still don't like it I don't have to like it I don't have to like I it. don't like it but I'm like how much did you pay all right fair enough oh, yeah. yeah they own it <laughs> <laughs> all right all right, fine. All right uh, that's a lot of money I, I guess. want to know yeah. I want to know I don't want to know what he would have said I want to know what he would say because Trill Living seems like a funny guy. Yeah. If he were to rate his anger on a scale out of 10, what he would give it? What, over Wilson or Riley? Over Riley. Riley, I think, would have been a 25. Yeah. Um, I like. I would just love to hear what he had and then just leave it there. Yeah, oh yeah. I was so upset and it might have been irrational, and, but I don't want to know what he would have said. I mean, I do want to know what he would have said, but I he'll never answer that. I want to know. The, the rest of the Leafs-Caps game uh, was interesting for a few reasons. Uh, the first one is Steve doesn't have to eat uh, mustard on a uh, cupcake for a while. Anything for a laugh. Um, He put mustard on a cupcake because Morgan Riley is the cupcake and TJ Brody's the mustard. And while they're good separately, together, terrible. And uh, and he did that that in the LFR. I had a sore stomach the whole night. No, of course you did. Mustard on a cupcake. I didn't eat it. Either. I didn't swallow it. I had a cup off screen and I spat it into it. Well, that's, And that, I still felt disgusting. That, that you're ruining the illusion. We all thought you swallowed. Oh, well. Did he no, inhale? I did. Um, but so we, we see finally that, that Keith has moved off that and Connor Timmons draws in because I think Bush is sick. He mm-hmm. had a great game. And, uh, and obviously we didn't know why Bertuzzi wasn't playing much in the first. It turns out he was ill. And then and is not skating today because he's ill. Domi was like really cryptic about what's wrong with him. And oh well, I, he played fine. The thing Scored I want, I th- the thing I want to mention is you put Max Domi mm-hmm. in Mitch Marner's spot, and they only did it five on five. They did not do this on the power play. That's okay. No, it's not. You're right. It's absolutely not okay. You're right. Uh, but Max Domi goes in 
and has four assists. I Which mean, it's hard to way, complain about how that game went. <laughs> more more points in a game than his dad ever had with the Leafs. Colby Armstrong broke yeah. that to uh, Max. That was really cool. Max Domi is now the Leafs' five-on-five five primary assist leader. He is 17. Wow. He's ahead of Marner, ahead of Riley. And really? A, yeah. Wait, he's wow. ahead of Marner? Well, he's number one on five-on-five five primary assists. Like this is no, a, that can't be right. No, Marner's got fifty assists. Yeah, and and Max Domi five has five on five. So specific. five on five, five primary. on five primary. So he's the first name <laughs> five on five. Oh, five on primary, primary only, Which not is, and yeah. not second. <laughs> it's very specific. How many does Marner I think it have? says something though. What's that? How many does Marner have? I think he's got a lot of assists. He always does. Have fun looking that you up, know? Jesse. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you. Wow. Holy shit! It's a really? big stat, and listen, primary assists. So there's, so here's the hierarchy: goals, primary assist, Thomas Coverley, goes second assist. Yeah, right? but my thing is, we're getting so specific. I to think give that him this. matters though, because you're talking about five on five, uh, and you're talking about the fact that he is the direct reason the goal happened. He's the vision. He that gave led it to, to the goals. I think that matters. I and think it, that counts. And he typically doesn't play with Austin Matthews. He's playing with like I don't know who have been his line mates this year, like. Ber- Bertuzzi for a bit. Nice. He's, he's been moved around a lot. Yarn croak. So at, at five, like goals. you didn't you didn't have to get so so specific. At five on five, Max Domi has twenty nine assists. Mitch Marner has twenty five. Wow. Max Domi has seventeen primary assists at five on five. Mitch Marner has sixteen. Max Domi has twelve secondary assists at five on five. Mitch Marner has nine. He just leads at five on five. He leads in assists. Like it's, this guy is it's a good player. A wow. And, and 29 to 25 and 3 million bucks for a guy that has got you. Listen, I understand that there are awards to Max Domi's game and I don't know why I have defense. To, why do I have to qualify that every time? I, I don't know. know. You, but I what mean, I need, you don't have to do anything. You're right. You're right. Because what, what I'll get is, well, is that bad at defense? You and can, I'm like, well, <laughs> you can start talking about the so last time Ovechkin. you went to the grocery store right now. If you want, what, like you're free to do that. Yeah. I, okay. my point is, my point is it worked at five on five. Sheldon, Sheldon did two things extremely correct. Mm-hmm. He put Max Domi in Mitch Marner's spot five on five. Mm-hmm. He broke up Riley Brody and admitted publicly that Brody's not had a good year. It took mm-hmm. him 68 games to go. You know what? We've only got 14 of these left. Probably shouldn't anymore. And, and, and what's interesting about all that is that he couldn't, he could have made it a hat trick. All he needs to do is put Max Domi on power play one. And he ah, doesn't score seven effing, goals. No, I'm not bothered no, by I'm it. I'm bothered by it. Yeah. You put dress your best lineup. Put these players in the roles that they see. Many, and by the way, Sheldon seven? Keith, was it seven? Seven goals. Seven. Yes. I, I so think many that goals. Was the number, right, Steve? It what? was uh, yes, yeah, seven. seven. Sept. How many? French. Sept. Is that a lot for a hockey game? I'm gonna fight you. Guys. It, it's uh, actually quite a bit. Do you think game, scoring yeah. seven goals in a game is reason to complain about the lineup? I'm gonna complain. Yeah. Yeah. I do. If I'm well, sorry, I'm putting myself in Adam Wilde's shoes. <laughs> yeah. And also, I know they're 14 0 and 2 in their last 16, but I'm not <laughs> mad. Please stop telling people that I'm mad. <laughs> My point is, I look at this, I look at Power Play One, and I'm like, Timothy Lilligren does not need to be on Power Play One. He was good too. Yeah, that's, that's great, but he doesn't need to be on it. I, I'm oh, shocked okay. that. Or I'm shocked that put, after that I am, game, I'm a Adam, Domi truther, and you guys need to Adam, accept. After it. that game, I think it's it's wild. It's Adam Wild you're coming in oh, here oh, oh. with complaints. I'm complaining about that. Put this guy in the spot that Mitch Marner was in. Timothy Lilligren, uh, he played a good game. Good for him. Does he have the vision that Mitch Marner has? No. Does he have the the vision that Max Domi has? Does he have the vision completely that Max Domi has? Skillset, Does he have actually. the vision that Max Domi has? No, because they no, have completely he doesn't. different the types no. of vision. Then what's yeah. he doing on power play two? You got Morgan Riley there. What are you doing? It, can I throw out an idea? Sure. Um, I was trying to think of... So obviously, it took a few games for Domi to work with Matthews, and then it clicked. Mm-hmm. I was trying to think of, like, what would their hesitance even be? Like, Marner goes down... Domi is... He's the obvious one. He's the obvious one. Why wouldn't they do it? And then Stubborn. I was, stubborn, yeah. But then I was trying to think across Keefe's tenure with the Leafs and across Babcock's tenure with the Leafs. What lefty has ever played on the right of Matthews? Oh, that's a good question. Exactly. Kasperi Kapanen. And that went well. Righty. 
Oh, he's a left. Oh, yeah, he's not a lefty. Yeah. William Nylander, righty. Mitch Marner, righty. Righty. Zach Hyman played there a little bit, mm-hmm. righty. Who the hell? So they've never had a left shot left winger. Uh, no, a left shot right winger. Left shot right winger. Wow, I don't know. Right? Because they've been putting oh, yeah. Bertuzzi out there. And even if I got them mixed up and it's Bertuzzi on the right instead of Domi, Bertuzzi's a lefty. That's interesting. I, I know it's like a small thing and it sh- maybe shouldn't make that big of a difference to the best goal scorer in the sport. But but I I had to think about it. I was like, oh, that's like never happened. It's odd, right? Yeah. It is odd. It, and he's uh, had to do it all week. I don't the know rotation that rotation of uh, Domi, Holmberg, and Bertuzzi. And maybe the handedness has helped. I don't know, or maybe it's hindered. I don't know. I don't you know, know. you know how specific these guys are. My point is, um, they obviously I, had to make some adjustments. Max Domi doing well in this position shouldn't surprise people. If you got to sign him to four times four, who says no? Him, the Leafs, or sign the deal? I think they both sign it. That's a lot. Four times four? Yeah. He's making three. Yeah. I don't, yeah, but I, then for four and years, they, you're committed to this. Yeah. Cap going up. Um, three times three. I three times three. Ooh. Yeah, see? That, that means <laughs> Domi like, says ah, no. That means think, Domi says no. Guys, Boy, the give Flames, me a deal. Yeah, <laughs> see? That means Domi says no. Mason Raymond got three times three from the Flames after he was in Toronto for a year. No. Yes, he did. So, no. Max Domi, four, I would do three times. I think four million is fair. Okay, 3.5 times 3.5. I don't know if you could do three times. No, they got to re-sign Half him in season. Like January. Oh, man, he yeah. can't play for us. The transfer window is open. They should do that. <laughs> they should do that. <laughs> they should have that. Yeah, half-season contracts. The PWHL has that. You can cut players. Do mid-season. they really? Mid-season, you can cut them. And a couple players did get cut. They're really interesting. Man. Yeah. So Let's try it. I, it should just be called the let's try it. My point is, yeah. I'm excited to see this against Edmonton, too. Because Edmonton's going to come in guns blazing. They don't care that Mitch Marner's not playing, if he's, in fact, not playing. We still don't know when he's going to be back. McDavid, is he's going to be fired up because it's like, oh, Max Domi's Matthew's setup, man. That was supposed to be my job. <laughs> That's what he's going to do. He's going to be really jealous, I think. So he's going to show up. And, he's, and then he's going to be like, this is what it's going to look like when I sign here in a yeah. couple of years. You guys get it's ready. It's going to be a good game. It is going to be a good game. Yeah. It's going to be a very good when game. When I get traded for Marner straight up this summer. <laughs> Stop it. I know. I know. Um, the, the, the game itself, though, I mean, this was uh, this is one where you think with the, the Leafs being where they are um, and the Caps being where they are, it, I thought it was going to be closer. Well, having such a bad result first half of a back-to-back and then you're playing another really, really hungry team back-to-back on the road with travel. Eh, it's mm-hmm. not looking great. And it was a great performance, man. Every time the Caps crept back into the game, which they did over and over again, yep. the Leafs smothered it real quick. Yeah, second period especially when they came back. Now, And and how did they smother it, by the way? Uh, did they crawl into a shell? No. Or did they continue to completely shoot the lights out? That's what they did. That's probably what they ought to do. Isn't it funny that the Oilers do that? Yeah. And are more successful? I've like the urgency has never been all right, guys. We gotta be a lock it down team. No, it's let's fucking murder the Sabers eight <laughs> three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and know, they just score. They it, score a shitload of goals. Ovi got two more goals. He is within fifty of Wayne Gretzky's record. Mm-hmm. Um, very cool to see Matthews and Ovi go head to head. Wanted Matthews to get the hat trick. Understand why that goal was illegal, but um, very cool to see them going head to head. Does Ovi do this next year? Feels like it's nope. going to be next year. He's, Fifty goals next year? No, no. Well, he'll get, now. He'll get oh, some more yeah. this year. I'm assuming, right? Like, I'm assuming he's good for what five, ten more. Uh, ten would be something. Uh, let's let's say it's forty. Let's just round it off. Does Ovi score forty goals next season? No. Yeah. You don't think so? Mm, okay. I don't know. Here's man. what makes me say maybe. Mm-hmm. That ridiculous decision. I'm not even going to call it a pass. That ridiculous decision from Dylan Strom. What one? The one where he had a solid half hour to shoot at Joseph Wall all alone, and he passed to Ovechkin anyway, and Ovechkin scored. They're trying to find him. If Ovi doesn't score that goal, I'm not playing you a shift the rest of the game. Yeah. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. But, like, he's chasing down Gretzky, and he's Alex Ovechkin. How do you ever not pass the puck? Yeah. No, That's I so think you difficult. do. so difficult. 
Also, they Ovi scoring from you know getting that power play goal from the from the spot. He always gets the power play goal. Oh my god! I, remember, I looked over at my wife. And I was like, he's done this to us every time we've ever played because he he lights the Leafs up every time they play. Every time. Um, and no one can ever stop it. Mm-hmm. They were bad for like his entire early career and early prime. So yeah, that's why we think that. Yeah. And then it's not like they were ever great defensively. No, never. So you you're, wanna, you're welcome there, Al. You guys want to see how much time Dylan Strom just had to lazily uh, stroll into the zone there he is. And with the puck. No, so great th- coverage. He, he takes there. it here. Well, that's because Benoit made that ridiculous decision. Strom's coming in. Ovechkin's just hanging out. He just skates in <laughs> all the time in the world. Oh, still haven't made a pass. Still haven't made a pass. Oh, just waiting. Ovi gets it. Like, that's not even a good, that not a good, good angle. That's not even a good angle. No. Had, had like Wall been in like... position, he probably would have saved it. Well, Wall's not in position because it's a two-on-one and you play the percentages. The percentage is, okay, there's no pass there. I'm yeah. playing this guy. I don't blame Wall at all. Like... <laughs> all the did, all the Leafs did on this play was take away the pass. Like they they're just playing the pass, and Dylan Strom decides I'm in the pass it. And you play the pass because the guy being passed to is Ovi. This shouldn't be a goal. Like okay, it's Benoit's fault for the turnover in the first place. Yeah. After that, I don't lay blame. What are you I, doing? I also want to say I I got big mad at this goal just because it was like it was the third period. It's ten minutes left or thirteen minutes left. And they let them in the game. And that drives me crazy. Now, they did. Yes. They went on and scored four goals after this, or three goals after this. It was fine. But, like, at that moment, that game could have been tied within the next couple of minutes. If it wasn't for Willie scoring the next minute. Yeah. Right? Uh, Lindgren had a tough game. Dylan Strom, at no point, he's standing <laughs> one-on-one with Joseph Wall from where I am to where Steve is. Yeah. And at no point does he look at the net and decide to no. take a shot. He's looking at Ovi right now. You can His see His body it. is turned yeah. towards Ovechkin at the side of the of look, the of the Sandine. <laughs> so you see Sandine creeping in there? He's legit a better option. Oh, yeah. Yeah, feeding it to Sandy is coming up. Crazy. 100%. Because no one's picking that pass off. Like, I think I would love to be a fly on the wall for the goalie coach meeting. Like, Wool talking to the, uh, who's the Leafs goalie coach? Curtis Sanford. Uh, I don't think they think he did anything wrong here. The only thing they might say is he's a little too deep in his net. That's, yep. Yeah. You, maybe, that's you, it. maybe you got to be a little more stand up in that position and you block, take away the top of the net. But what can you do? You play the percentages there, man, yeah. and I think that is ninety percent of the time a shot, so, so, and ten percent of the time, the the puck carrier getting screamed at by the coach. Steve's passing. point is that if they keep playing like this for an entire season next year, there's a chance he could hit forty goals. I think. Yeah, it's possible. Well, so someone asked me, "What's the date you think he breaks Gretzky's record?" So I gave him a season and a half. And I said, I think the exact date was January 26th. See, I think it's going to be 2026 because that's Gretzky's 65th birthday. I'm going to say early April 2025. Oh, you think next season? I think he's getting 40, 40 something next season. I think, I think, though he's at 23. Yeah, but I think this, whatever happened this year is not going to happen again. The caps are going to get better this offseason. They need, they need a goalie. It's, and they need, uh, you know, this year was about, like Kuznetsov needed a good start. They didn't start well. They got a new head coach in there. There's a lot of reasons why the Caps, you know, they are aging out too. They do look older. They are, but um, like to your point, like it's not that Ovi's not scoring. It's that none of them are scoring. Right. So go no find, one on the team is scoring. Go. I know the free agent crop this year isn't great, but go find somebody who can set them up. They're also. You know uh, who'd love that? Max Domi. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Just staple him. Oh Ovi. my God. Don't oh. play any defense, boys. Just. Just feed Ovi. Because you, you want to be the guy who assisted on that. Game. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, you do. shit. That's actually a really good point. Yeah. Now, we just better pay Max Domi 10 million bucks. Now, getting, now, before the season began, we compared the, the Ovi Capitals yep. to the Crosby Penguins. And one thing that I was bullish on at the time was the Capitals are better set up for the future than the Penguins are. And uh, getting older isn't actually that bad of a thing for the caps they got protus they got lapierre they got maroshnichenko like they have good prospects already in the lineup or getting into the lineup Mm -hmm. um so they could get better just naturally that way 
you make a decent trade, sign a guy or two that helps too. Yep. Yeah, and you give maybe you, you got to find like Anthony Duclair scored again last night. By the way, uh, like do you reunite Duclair so with funny. the Capitals like for some depth scoring? Like this is the thing you got. He's gonna sign in Tampa for. He's gonna find a way to make less than league men. I know <laughs> it's funny how they do that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I just think the Washington Capitals. I don't feel like they want to stay this way for that long. Like I don't think they're in retool for Obi's last years, and I, nah. I will be watching them very closely. What I'm looking for them on cap friendly, and I can't find them. I don't know what their cap situation is. What do you need to know? Caps situation? Ah, the Caps situation. There it is. <laughs> what do you need to know, Adam? Well, huh? I just want to know who's going to be an UFA next year and who's sticking around. Patches, Abe Kubel, uh, and then you got a bunch of RFAs. That's it. Okay. That's you, got, it. you got two UFAs on there. And do you have much space? Yeah, you actually do. You got They've got $9 million right now. Like, like they're, nine, they're $9 million under the cap right now. I can't oh, projected cap it is 85. <laughs> like I had to put my glasses on. Yeah, because they have uh, Backstrom on LTIR, right? Right. Right, right. So right. that's creating about 9 million. Okay. 9.2 million. In oh, Connor McMichael. How did I forget him? Yeah, man. Like they, they the got better some really Connor, good young players. As we know him. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Nick Dowd. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> like, Shut up. Listen, there are some head scratching deals on that. Um, I want to see if they can find somebody who can help Darcy Kemper regain his form, his avalanche form, because it's not been a good. Yeah, Couple but they have years. Charlie Lingren. Charlie Lingren's been incredible during this run that's brought him back into the playoffs. Like not that he's game, been yeah. he's not that game, but he's had a good little run from about mid Feb on. Could you trick the Senators into taking another bad goalie contract? <laughs> they love like, doing that. Who's there what are the chances Co- Corpus Allo is better? Uh I'd be like, hey, can I interest you in a retained Darcy Kemper and you can have a I, I'm not convinced either of those guys are bad goalies. I, you I know think, who is? What? Travis Yost. He said this Corpus Allo deal is going to age like milk, and and it has. Oh, I didn't say it was a good deal. It's not a good deal. But I just feel like both, like Corpus Allo and Forsberg deployed properly should be a decent tandem. I thought it was. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be. Well, if you ask Rod Brindamore, they they were going to the the Stanley Stanley Cup Cup final. final. What happened? I don't know. I don't know. Weren't they one of the teams who claimed Forsberg that year he got claimed by like eight teams? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I don't know what's happening there. Yeah, do you want to look cool this summer? Yeah, but I need something. Well, you probably need polarized sunglasses. Oh, how about more than one pair of polarized sunglasses? Because shady rays. Look at Jesse. Oh, damn, hold shady Jesse. Look at woo. Oh wow, the aviator look is wow. Looks good on you. Shady rays. Also, damn, you got this handy dandy mouth guard. That's right. No. Not great for commercial reads, but great for storing your sunglasses. <laughs> I don't think that's what those. The oh, is this not what it's for? No, oh. no. Yeah, no. You're but not it's okay. To... <laughs> you looked cool while you were doing it. I did, definitely did. Shady Rays is giving out the best deal of the season. Head to shadyrays.com and use SDP for fifty percent off two or more polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself sh- the shades that are rated five stars by over three hundred thousand people. Jesse, how much cooler? So, like, okay, normally on a normal day, how cool do you feel out of 10? Uh, one. A one. Now, with your Shady Rays sunglasses, how do you feel out of 10? A million. Yeah. A yeah. Give, million. Me a quick, give me a quick finger guns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you give me a double finger guns? Oh. Wow. It's the sound that really... He did the, he that in the sunglasses. Thing. That's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a good snap. Again... Uh, ShadyRays.com. Use the code SDP for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Shady Rays and SDP and Jesse looking cool. Here, wait, Jesse. I'm t- winking. Jesse, take them off. Take them off. Oh, what a dork. <laughs> oh, hold on. Hold on. Oh, hey! oh, nice. Oh, nice. So cool. Nice. When was the last time that you guys went on an adventure? A, an adventure? An adventure that lasted too late into the evening. Well, one time I went into the forest and I met this special goblin who gave me three wishes, but I woke up because it was a dream. Jesse, what about you? Uh, this one time I had to go to Mordor and find these rings. Oh, my God. And then I was Can't I was on a, like a long journey. My friend Frodo was there. I was talking and about... Smeagol was like, yeah, Adam, you need morning hydration to Adam, bring you up. You need liquid IV. Is what Adam, I'm trying to say. No. It's, what? Read it again. What? It's liquid the fourth. Oh, it's not liquid the fourth. It's liquid not? IV. <laughs> <laughs> it's liquid IV? <laughs> oh. I've been calling it liquid the fourth oh, this whole time. Darn it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Listen, I thought there were three liquids before it. It's great for your daily workout when you feel run down, when you've had a long night out, when you've had a long flight. That's when you need liquid IV. And, it, and by the way, we all use it. 
That's true. And, and maybe we, I need some right now. And Maddie does too. Maddie's yeah. Maddie's all the way in on liquid. Yeah, when you gotta I, go find those rings and throw them into a giant eyeball of fire. Stop. You know, you need some liquid <laughs> IV for your adventure. It is non-GMO and free of gluten, dairy, or soy. There are eight vitamins, no artificial sweeteners. Uh, however you hydrate, grab liquid IV hydration multiplier. It's sugar-free, and you can get it in bulk nationwide at Costco or 20% off on your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code DANGLE. D-A-N-G. GLE at checkout. Again, that's 20% off your first order when you shop hydration today. Use that promo code DANGLE, D-A-N-G-L-E, at liquidiv.com. Um, okay, moving on here. Uh, the Ch- Capitals have their brand new Cherry Blossom jerseys. Jesse, do you have? Cherry yeah, Blossom. I bring it up. Uh, cherry Blossoms, I believe. Well, I mean, it's almost Cherry Blossom season. We have that here in Toronto, too, where uh, we've got like a... a Cherry blossoms, I believe, that were donated from Japan, and they're beautiful. And during the pandemic, they actually fenced them off uh, in High Park because people, it, they're like an Instagram phenomena. Everybody wants to take a picture with the cherry blossoms, and people were breaking in. Uh, and if you what? walk along, if you walk along between the White House and the, and the, um, uh, like in all the the major buildings and stuff like that. you see the Washington Monument in the background. There's cherry blossoms all over the place, and it's very pretty. So this is a very Washington D.C. thing. Um, they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. These are gorgeous, gorgeous jerseys. So the other thing I want to throw out there is: is it going to get complicated? Because they were not. They were denied the Virginia plan. Ted Leonsis was denied the Virginia plan, moving them to Virginia. Now they're going to North Maryland. They're expecting to go to to Maryland. Is it going to be hard to call them the Maryland Capitals? Just pay for stuff. Ted Leonsis is a giant dickhole. <laughs> he's the he's one of the worst billionaires out there. Why? Why is no? He, okay, cheap. no. Here, I mean, we're going to dance. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to put my foot down and say no. He's <laughs> absolutely not. For, apparently, no, he's a really no nice guy. Way. No way. No, no. You know how. <laughs> You know what? I think Spike Dudley has a chance of beating Brock Lesnar. Like, no, man. They're not in the same weight class. I should qualify that statement. He is a terrible pro sports team owner in that he has a lot of money. He has a great location for his teams, Mm -hmm. and he's refusing to spend his own money to support his teams and instead wants to go to a state where they're just going to give him free taxpayer money. I agree with you. And I hate that stuff. I agree with you, and I'm not going to defend him, but I would edit the statement to he is a pro sports owner. No, no. There are good owners who pay for things. I look at Climate Pledge Arena. An entirely privately funded arena that is so wickedly. Do you know it has a? It opens like it's part what? outdoors. One of the window oh. at the side of the stadium it retracts, is it and open? they can open. Anyways, it's it's so cool. Um, it's privately funded. Isn't the isn't the parent company Amazon? Uh, yeah, Amazon has a lot to do with it, and they no OVG o- Oakview Group is the one that did it all. Yes, but but they they own the na- Climate Pledge Arena is an Amazon initiative from their like climate pledge, yes. climate change the stuff. Yes. Right. So like no, wow. no, that's that's so besides the point. All I'm no, saying no, is, but what I'm saying is like, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, they privately funded an arena, which is good. Yes. There's there's can we admit there's some butts attached there. What what is the but what are, were you trying to distract from the point that Ted Leones just wants taxpayer money to build an ar- I, to fix his arena? No, no there's there's no uh, contribution. Okay, how about Jeff this? Bezos? I got one. I got one. I got what? one. He Here. paid. All I'm talking about is paying for an arena, I got which one. is good for him. I got one. Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. They wanted to augment the TFC Stadium where the Argos play to. It's not the Argos Stadium. It's where TFC plays. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. TFC first, mm-hmm. and they co-own that space with the city. And the up- upgrades were going to cost $50 million, and they didn't even bother going to the city. They just spent the $50 million and said, our teams play here, our fans come here, that's what you do. I'm glad they did that. And I like, and I like that. I like that. I won't add a butt. Yeah. Um, and I also think, what, the thing with Leonsis is they do have a great location. Like, we went there for a, Jesse and I went there for a, uh, a Washington versus Toronto NBA game mm-hmm. in the playoffs. The, the problem is that... It's cheaper to tear something down than it is to, and, and then build it back up than it is to renovate it. Mm. And so that is a perfect location. They should never move. But I bet the cost to renovate that, as we're seeing with like the Blue Jays in the three and four hundred million dollars over the course of two or three years, is probably not something he would like to do. Sometimes you're a billionaire, man. You got to eat it. Can I? Can I just say like, you know, I do my taxes every year, and I'm like, I'm an adult. Here I am, I'm a big boy, and I have two kids and a car, and I'm a grown-up. And then I hear 
Rogers spends three hundred million on renovations for a building that we all know is eventually going to get torn down. I think the point is they're not going to tear it down. Well, and I'm sitting there like a little boy going, I don't know what that means. I don't understand that. Yeah. I don't. I'm just going to go and go take me out to the ball. Like, I'm not going to try to pretend to have any idea what's going on there. <laughs> well, I think what they're doing is they're taking. So when 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 for specifically as it pertains to Rogers Center. When they built it, it was supposed to be multi-purpose. The whole thing was, well, it's got a retractable roof, and you can have it in nine different settings, mm -hmm. like whatever. Like you have, you can have concert, you can have hockey, you can have basketball, you know, whatever, whatever it was you could do. Um, and primarily, it's used now for bad concerts because the sound always sucks in there, and mostly baseball. And so, baseball. And and yeah, so you're not playing Argo football in there. You're not playing Raptors games in there. You're not worried about that. So they're like, let's turn it into an experience for baseball fans. They also look at the market for baseball in Canada, which right now we have one team. Hopefully the Expos come back. But even then, the Jays will probably be the dominant fan base. And you have an entire country to support this team. So it makes sense business-wise to invest in it. And no, I don't think they're going to tear it down. It's Well, that was... I, that's I, what I, because there's nowhere else to go. Mm -hmm. it, it went... Can we admit the narrative went very abruptly from they need to tear that down to they're putting three hundred million into it? Well, because I think they realized the cost of land. You'd have to tear. You'd have to go buy a piece of land, tear whatever's on that down. Well, nothing they, around there is worth tearing down. And then where are you going to put it? Well, yeah. Where would they even play in the meantime? Also, bingo. And the answer is the University of Toronto. And if anyone says that's ridiculous, we're going to get really indignant about it. Yeah, there's 5,000 seats there. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. more than I, enough. I love how Steve successfully distracted from the point of this entire segment. I actually don't that, remember what it was. Yeah. That the <laughs> Just yeah, I haven't slept. That the that, Washington... That Ted Leones this is trying to move the team despite... He so uh, just to outline the numbers for you, Steve, mm. since you want to defend Ted Leonsis. I don't want to defend him. The Washington Capitals need eight hundred million dollars to renovate their current building. It's where the the Wizards play and the Caps play. Downtown. And that is a lot of money a lot for of money. a renovation. A lot of money, right? Quite a bit. The city of Washington, D.C. the the mayor of the D.C. area, Joe Biden, said that they will commit five hundred million of the eight hundred million dollar project. Half a Billion dollars. Ted Leones just wants six hundred. So it's over a hundred million bucks. So he's threatening to move the team over that. He, they're paying for over half of the entire renovations, and he's still going out and wow. looking for different locations. It's a better deal than the Flames got. Better deal than the Flames got. He didn't want to just say, "Yeah, you know what? Five hundred's cool. I'll throw in the last three hundred million. No, he's still out looking for different locations. Even though Virginia rejected him, and now he's like, "What about Maryland? You know what? The dude's a jerk." I'll fall on my sword. I will take the half billion dollars. <laughs> That's so nice. I will take it. That's so nice. If he doesn't want it, I'll take, take it, it? Wow. and we'll drive to San Diego. That. So that that came out in <laughs> December uh, when the mayor said that they're going to commit 500 of the 800, and there hasn't been like a oh yeah, let's stay here. He's still he's still he's still looking for like the new, he can build a new billion dollar arena where he can get a whole bunch of taxpayer money and revitalize the Caps and the Wizards and move them to Maryland, or whatever. But he should just stick where he is. You know, like it's a perfectly great location. We've been there. I liked it. I think it's central to every all the Virginia and Maryland and everything in D.C. It's central to it. And he's being a jerk about it. That's so much money. <laughs> yeah. Holy so what you're telling shit. me is caps are staying in Washington and it's just a matter of somebody like, breaking on one side or the other. Because I can tell you that um, Virginia, I, I believe we're like, no, we won't mm -hmm. uh, put up the money. And I'm sure Maryland won't either. And we'll see. I mean, the other thing is like with renovations, with stuff like that, because the, the caps and the whiz still have to play there. So you do that over you amortize that you do that over three or four years. I think it's a four. I think it's a four year, eight hundred million dollar renovation. That's so what it's it so what wow. it would be to him is not eight hundred at once. It's two hundred million. And really, if the city's paying five eighths of it, you're talking about. I mean, what do you pay? like probably 40, 50 million bucks a year? Yeah. Ted. Right, Come on, Ted. and all that you know, that's not like cash. Like that, he's paying with that with like credit. You yeah. know, like oh, yeah, you go get a loan. Yeah, absolutely. This is, this is zero oh, and, and, By the way, and right off the interest too. Oh yeah, you pay for it with eight ninety five hats. Eight ninety five. The that? second OV hits that record. Oh. <laughs> oh, of eight hundred ninety five goals. No, you need you need a you need a funny retupect hat. 
Like oh. what, what is it? What is Ovi's goal shirt? Oh, we got to come up with that and copyright it before Ted Leone's this can. Okay, which okay, so we have something to work with. Ovechkin. Mm -hmm. So you just make the O and eight. Screw it. You just make the O and eight. Where do you put the nine and where do you put the five? But it's a number. The O. The no, no, o. you're putting the number into when you the just, name. Does it? Isn't it just like O eight nine five? Like wouldn't that? That's what I would do. Oh, you do an O with eight nine five in it. Yeah. All right. No, now, but that, now but here's the problem, though. But that's a number. No, no, like zero. It'll look like a zero. Looks like he scored ninety-five goals. <laughs> I just thought it would be eternal. Ovechkin eternal. No, see now. How do you put the Ted eight? Leone's has to give us a portion. Yeah, because yeah. we came up with it on the show. That's is that true. is that where I'll we're going? Sue him if he friggin' does this. Yeah. Eight, uh, well, or, it needs to be like eight v nine five. Can we can we do Alex? Shut up! Eight. Shut up! It's eight v i nine five. Wait, That's it. A five of oh. a, a five is a V in Roman numerals. Oh, that's good. That I don't know where we go with that, but it's good. <laughs> There's a V in his name, you see. Did you see that? I don't know how the what the shirt looks like, but that's smart. Listen, hey, anybody who's a graphic designer, can you let's see what you got? <laughs> Ovechkin eight nine five. No, April next year. The jersey says Cream City. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, that was Milwaukee. They uh, Washington had it was the, the Dick uh, and Balls. Dick and Balls. It was yeah, the Dick and, Dick and Balls, balls jersey. <laughs> Let's bring it up. <laughs> the Washington Dick and Balls jersey is great. Oh, by the my way, God. I know that was you, one of my favorite. I know you can't name a team Bullets, but it was a good name. They're a bad team, but it was a good what, name. I, I want to know where you get Wizards from. Is it just because it starts with a W? Hmm. I'm starting to think that was the main reason. Probably. You also, anything else. everybody calls them the Wiz, which is not like Ew. it's not your greatest nickname. No. Ah, you want to go see the Wiz? No. <laughs> uh, we don't need that. They could have, and they've, they're missing a branding opportunity with Cheese Wiz. Right? Like crazy. The jersey they, should be orange. They should be orange, and they should be the Cheese Wiz jerseys. They should 100%. That'd be hilarious. It, it's well, no, the jersey should be white and have orange, like just all over it. Like just smear. Like splatter over. marks? Yeah. Okay. No, like like finger, like toddler, disgusting, bleh, all over. I think you want to sell the product, though. I don't think you want to make it look disgusting. You're trying oh. to encourage people to eat it. This is why, you know, it's good to have differing, you know, viewpoints. It's good to get out there and make No, Maddie, about do you it? want to pull up our favorite Washington Wizards Maddie. logo? <laughs> it's a dick and balls. <laughs> it's a penis and testicles. It is. It's aggressive. <laughs> With a basketball would be a good uh, manscaped uh, logo, I think. <laughs> that's yeah, that would be There's the point. Oh, would be kind of the shaft there. And no, you <laughs> know, that's the jersey, and then you have manscaped on the jersey. Because listen, they've they've trimmed it up. Look at how trim it is. Yeah, no, no, it'd be manscaped across the top. Oh, okay. And then no, I don't know. It also no, doesn't even look deep. like it says DC. It looks like it says CLC. Yes, in the shape yeah. of a dick and balls. Yeah. Yeah. Ball. It's, it's awful. Also, logo. DLC to me always looks like downloadable content. So mm. I, I don't mm. I don't know why you're going with Video DLC. Games. Dude, yeah. that's the worst logo in the history of That's it something that you like pitch as a joke. CLC because the the C's are the same. That's something Pete Blackburn would post to be cheeky. It like, looks like and, and they sold that. <laughs> they point. sold it. They made players wear this. Mm -hmm. No, that's terrible. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. absolutely terrible. <laughs> Um, the Caps should have to wear that. Guys, is March Madness better better suited suited in hockey? Like, like Zach Hyman could hit fifty goals against the Leafs on Saturday. Could that's March Madness? He's two goals away against his former oh, that's, team. That's how you're shoehorning. That's how I'm shoehorning together. it in for BetMGM. <laughs> that was, Listen, it that okay. was awful. Oh, no, but are you taking it? If 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 it, it's if it's Zach Hyman, two goals. What I'm doing is taking the reins away from you. Okay, well, and uh, also yes, I'm taking that. Jesse, are you taking it? Sure, I'll, it? I'll throw two dollars, Steve, on Zach Hyman scoring two goals on Saturday. Listen, if you're ready to shoot your shot and catch all your favorite <laughs> matchups, we've made the BetMGM experience more immersive and fun for all types of hockey, basketball, and every other sport you can imagine. And of course, it's March Madness. So you, if you're experiencing basketball, or you're like Steve and your bracket's already broken because Kentucky's out of the first <laughs> oh, round. <yeah. laughs> 
Um, you can check it out. There's exciting state-of-the-art live tracking technology and dozens of sportsbook selections awaiting you with BetMGM Sportsbook. Tap into every game on your mobile device and enjoy all the hoops and the nets. Because there's hoops and there's nets, but there's nets in both sports. You have teams like Longwood, right. Moorhead, <laughs> and others. Uh, BetMGM is the king of sports books. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. Must be 19 years of age or older. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. If you have any questions or concerns about your gambling or someone close to you, please contact Connects Ontario at one 531 2600 to speak to an advisor free of charge. Checking in on the standings, by the way. Uh, the Philadelphia Flyers have a tenuous hold over that third spot. The Washington Capitals are four points behind them. Wow. But they have two games in hand. What is so the their winning percentages are the same. What is the goal differential for the Caps? Oh, it's bad. Negative 31. That's unbelievable. Flyers, negative six. Wow. And the Islanders have really let me down because I thought that they were going to come charging in. And they were having like a good old fashioned mid off with the Detroit Red Wings last night until Detroit said, okay, fine, we're going to win this game. Did we nail that division or what? Like before this year? I, I don't actually think can't we even. Did. I well, don't like, know if we did. We, we got it wrong. <laughs> I don't with, think we nailed anything. Well, okay. well we said they we were got the it mid wrong with the Flyers. Yeah. But we called it the mid Tripolitan. Dude. It is. It's the Rangers and Hurricanes. We thought the Devils would be good. Yeah. Got that wrong. I did, yeah. Yep. But I did. Who didn't? So, right. okay, the order, we completely fucked up. Yeah. But the quality of the division we nailed. Yeah. Uh, we, it's not a race anymore for that second wildcard spot because the Red Wings are going to get it because yep. Dylan Larkin exists again on hockey ice, scored two goals, and the team is nothing without Dylan Larkin. And now that he is healthy again and scoring two goals, they're going to be fine. And they're going to go on a little run here. Yeah, I saw Islanders fans last night going, Dylan Larkin has to come back tonight? Yeah, Why? they're going to be they're going to be fine. They got their mojo back. Yeah, you're right. Um, but I, uh, the Washington Capitals still have that shot of passing Philly. Uh, can like, I? Just, that's still a thing. Can I just say that I, if you're a Carolina Hurricanes fan, congrats on your second round. Like I hate. For what? I well, because look, they're because okay. Assuming they don't beat the Rangers, it might be better for Carolina not to win the division because <laughs> they're playing Philadelphia or Washington. Yeah, and it's not that. They Not kill, that they, they could. They killed both of them. Listen, you can lose. Like, we saw the Blue, ja Blue Jackets beat Tampa. We saw it happen. Yeah. It does happen. Yeah. But my point is, likely not to happen. And you've got, on that Carolina Hurricanes team, way more experience than most of the players on the Caps and the Flyers now who haven't regularly been there. Like, the, the, the Carolina Hurricanes are a regular second-round team. You, you need your goalie to save you a little bit in a series like that. Like Sammy Erson. Charlie Lindgren. Charlie Lindgren. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm picking the Flyers if they're in the playoffs. Yeah? Yeah. Because of Torts. Yeah. I yeah. don't think... We've been burned be by Torts a times. Series. I don't think it's crazy. It won't be an enjoyable series at all. No. I think they can sneak out four wins against the Hurricanes. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. If it's the Caps, it, like if they're playing well, like this is all asterisks on when we get to the point of the season, but the, the Caps are playing well and the Hurricanes don't get the, like let's say they don't get the goaltending they need during that series. Like I could easily Yo, see the Flyers taking that. There is a 58 goal differential between the Hurricanes and Flyers. Who are separated by one point in the, or sorry, one spot in the standings. They're separated by a four lot points. more than four points. They're separated by 25 points. Oh, 25. Um, okay. Or no, they're not. 15. I can't count. Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, it's the Hurricanes, the Rangers, and nobody else with the asterisk that I don't want to play a team coach. By Man, can I, can we exactly. Just, can we just scroll up a little bit, Jesse? Sure. The fact that the Panthers have only allowed 168 goals this year. Like, compare that to the Bruins, who are ahead of them with 197 allowed, and the Leafs, who have allowed 215. <laughs> like, when you talk about what works in the playoffs when it's low event hockey, man, the Florida Panthers look scary on paper. They really do. Like, that is that is exactly the goal for versus goals against there is exactly what you need to win in the playoffs. Who has the most goals in the league? Is it the Leafs? I don't think so. I would check, 251? The, I would check the Oilers on that one. Oh, yeah, you're right. Colorado. Colorado, Dallas, Dallas, two fifty six, Toronto, two fifty one, not bad. Vancouver, two forty five, uh, and Tampa, two forty four. That's the top five. Wow. I mean, Edmonton being there, considering how they started, Edmonton having surrendered fewer than two hundred goals, considering how they started, it's crazy, dude. They're so unreal. Yeah, so unreal. Goals against leaders: uh, Winnipeg, one sixty four, Panthers, one sixty eight, oh, Kings, one eighty. Canucks 187, Hurricanes 187, top five. Man, 
I will sleep on those Jets. They screwed me last night. There are there are some like who, who, in in fantasy. Who'd you have? I I picked up Laurent Brassois because I'm like, okay, the Devils stink. Uh, the Jets don't allow goals, and neither does Laurent Brassois, and they lost. What's wrong? Why are you shaking your head? What? What's wrong? <laughs> Listen, I don't play a lot of fantasy hockey because none of you will let me in your pools. Because I think it's because I did so well at fantasy football, you guys. Oh, yeah. Can't handle it. You can't handle it. First year fantasy football already finished in the top three. Just throwing that out there. But No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. I was third place. You were third in I our third. fantasy football? Yeah, in the playoffs, I got to third. Who did you play in the third place game? I don't even remember. But oh. I, I'm third. I got money. Oh, I won nice. money. Nice. I was um, the third of third. But I want to say... Nice. What? <laughs> but I want to say... I won it, by the, the way, if anybody's wondering. Your focus I on goaltending... When most guys, like Mike Amato, who does uh, a lot of fantasy stuff, I think, for Sportsnet, would tell you, you could run goalie free. No, I have I have enough goal scoring, but here's the fatal flaw that I did yesterday. And Jesse's, I think you're both going to scream at me. There is a player who has not been good recently. Tim he's, Stutzla. He's been injured recently. Oh, we'll, <laughs> that get, was, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. We did that last episode. No, no, yeah, I, yeah, know, yeah. I know, Tim, I know. Tim Stutzla. So... There's a player who hasn't been good recently. He's been hurt, and he hasn't had a multi-goal game. He hasn't had a goal in eight games, and he hasn't had a multi-goal game since December 16th. Last night, I benched him. He had two goals. Jack Hughes. Oh! Why did you bench Jack Hughes? I have better players. He's been brutal. He's been brutal. I have better players but on Steve, my team. people pay to see him play. I know. Not recently. That's um, an egregious decision. He's been brutal. Who are your other players? Can you bring him up? Yeah. I just want to know who you who, who you, you played play? instead of Jack. Yeah, yeah sure. I, did... I think that that's context matters. No, no, context matters. Uh so okay. Oh man. No, no, I gotta go back to you. Steve also plays in like the arena football league of fantasy hockey. <laughs> <laughs> every, wow. every team makes the playoffs. There's only you know like six teams. <laughs> you guys have to be in the pool next year because the boys I actually have to be in the pool. Yeah, well, I forgot. <laughs> the boys messaged me last night and they're like, we're sick of Jesse talking shit. Yeah, come to a real league. Come, come play in a real league. You know like, what? no, the, the fact that you're in a position to have guys ahead of Jack Hughes is crazy. Okay. Like so I'm starting, I'm starting guys like David Perron, you know, like that's how deep our league is. Right. Yeah. So Jack Hughes, oh, he's noted Alan Walsh calling. Yeah. Yeah. Jack Hughes, after scoring two goals last night, is ranked 36th in the league, our league. Mm -hmm. uh, I and you benched <laughs> and I benched him. <laughs> he's I have six out of six. Philip years. Forsberg, who had two goals last night and is ranked 10th. Uh, Seth Jarvis, who's 59th, but he's been ridiculously hot recently. He's got. Goals in five of his last six. Yeah, he's been good. He's been good. Stupid like that. Uh, the one I'm ashamed of is Jesper Bratt. Um, I know I should. I should have. So done hold, Hughes on. Instead of hold on. I should have done Hughes instead of Bratt. I should have done Hughes instead of Bratt. Oh, you don't have to tell me. God. I know. I fucking know. Jesse, how could we have seen this coming? <laughs> if only we'd had some sort of heads up. You started Bratt ahead of Hughes. <laughs> he's been better. They've both been brutal, but he's been better. Okay. Yeah, but you just got to play long term. Just, hey, this no. guy is a better player. No, but he's fucking hurt. You spit all over your mic. And it's Good. So Glad. No, no. I talked about how he did. So he did nothing for me in fantasy last week. Like sure. literally didn't have a block, didn't have a shot, didn't have a hit, didn't have. And sure. I posted it and Devils fans were like, well, he's hurt, Steve. And they were like indignant about it. And I'm like, fine. Well, he's hurt then. So I'll bench him. So scratch him. <laughs> and he scored two goals for the first time in three months. Jonathan Marcheseau has been ridiculous. Uh -huh. Bo Horvat has been ridiculous. And Carter Verhage has been ridiculous. And they are all healthy. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, I also have William Nylander, but he wasn't playing, obviously. Yeah. And Clayton Keller, who I also... He fucking... Every year I have a player... Who's like, you should wave me. You should wave me. You should wave me. And then the day before I wave them, they're like, ah, no, I'm good again. Oh, uh, you should wave me. You should wave. And all year, it's been Clayton Keller and Tim Stutzla. They've been a thorn in my side. Who, who's in your league? Who, who's listening? Mikey Stevens, Ian Tulloch. James Myrtle. Myrtle's in that. Yeah. I got a message for you guys. Mickey Mouse. It is Mickey Whoa! Mickey Mouse. Everybody making the playoffs is Mickey Yeah, it's, it's Mickey, Mickey Mouse. Mouse. It is. You guys are. What's play, the play some play real volume? fantasy one day. Go, play with the big boys. You know, make a real league. I'll join. Uh, we get a good pot going. Like, let me know when it's not Mickey Mouse and I'll play with you. Guys. Yeah. Can we do it like an SDPN one? No. No, no. Why not? We did SDPN football. It was amazing. Yeah, it was a good time.
Why can't we do hockey? I don't know. We should do it. Get yeah, CJ should. Julian in on it. Come on, Nick Andrade picking all the Portuguese players. You know he would. Is that a thing? <laughs> yes, he would. <laughs> he would. He, he absolutely would. would. Who would it be? Nobody flies Tavares? the flag like producer Nick no, from Portugal. He doesn't. Yeah. And by the way, uh, producer Drew does not like the Portuguese little um, potatoes, which, which is that's wrong. That's got to be the final nail in the coffin of taking him seriously. Yeah. Like just like Leaf yeah, fans all get over so the place mad right at now. <laughs> you know what? Whatever. Leaf fans Friday. get so mad at producer Drew, and I just need you to know that he doesn't think Portuguese potatoes are good. You don't need to. You don't need to get mad. To anything he has to say. Yeah. You don't need to get mad. Yeah. Oh, you're obviously crazy. I your booze mean nothing. I've seen what makes you cheer. <laughs> okay. Now let's move on. Uh, the GM meetings. Um, there was a lot of r proposed rule changes and shut up. Um, and, <laughs> sorry, just sorry. sneeze. I sneeze. I'm sorry. Uh, a lot of proposed proposed rule changes, but um, I mean, we kind of went through them last episode. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to read something from Elliot Friedman. Last September, when the GMs and coaches met, because the GMs meetings used to be now and in June. And it was good for the insiders in June because they'd be making trades and getting ready for the draft. But most of the time, they couldn't get anything done because nobody cares about rules cha rule changes in June. You care about draft. You care about free agency. You care about making trades. Uh, so they're moving them to September. So last September, when the GMs met in Chicago, the league made it very clear that it was important that they agree to wear microphones and allow access where they'd been stingy in the past. In December, Bettman, unhappy with the number of times promises were denied in some cases after initial approval hmm. made this dis this disapproval very clear and demanded things change several sources who saw that his memo uh said he included something along the lines of it is not uh it is not an exaggeration to say the future growth of the nhl depends on him hey look at that and i just want to say wow flowers where it's due listen he's right and i'll, I'll tell right. you this I, I, soccer doesn't lie but I'll, as a as a Big Formula One fan who watches every race. Mid race, mm -hmm. they will talk to a team principal who's running the race. Like his drivers are out there, and they're like, "How, how do you feel about your race so far?" And they get three, four questions in. You could see in the states, Emily Kaplan in between benches all the time. You see it on TNT as well. Like for some reason, and I know the Leafs are number one on the list of teams that are saying no to this. Number one because you can't. Just because you wear blue and white, you can't talk to anybody. Everybody shut up. Stop asking us questions. This has got to change. This got to change. It's definitely especially a Canadian problem. Like, like I'll watch an American broadcast, and I'll see them talking to a coach mid-game. Yes. Like, what? And that's the point. They are all, all 32 teams are supposed to be doing this. I didn't know that. But they're supposed to be doing it regularly, like every game regularly. And they're all saying no. Don't NFL Films has everything. If you yes. if, if you ever seen NFL films broadcasts of like if you if there's an important moment in a football game they have one of those guys mic'd up and they have access to everything and they'll just air it like it, the uh, what the other leagues are doing with access to players like it's it's not even fair in comparison the NHL needs to get on that level absolutely and 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 Gary Bettman recognizing that is a breath of fresh air because mm -hmm. I don't know if five years ago he would have felt the same and there's a lot of things that they're behind on but this is. It's it's clear that in this world, this is what you need to do to succeed. Yep. The and reason that like uh, full swing is taken off. Right? Oh you, man, you fall in love with all these golfers because of the access. You know, you're seeing these people be real people, and that's all we want to see out of these NHL players. And thankfully, this Amazon thing it looks to be moving pretty well. You know, looks like they're gonna get a whole bunch of guys and have great access to that. But yeah, they need more mic'd up moments. They need more behind the scenes footage. Like that's gonna grow the game. And to that point, Jesse. The Amazon series. Mm -hmm. Chris Johnson let a couple names drop on insider Ooh, trading. Hit me. So uh, apparently this this idea. So the idea, if you, if you haven't heard, is Amazon's going to do a series where they follow 10 to 12 superstars around the league next year. Kind of is going to feel like Amazon's version of like what a, a full swing or drive to survive. Quarterback. Or, yeah. yeah. Um, which is a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, names on the series so far that that have apparently been well received. Like, hey, we love this idea. Leon Dreisaitl. Hey. Of course. Great sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Connor McDavid. Of course. Nice. Austin Matthews. Of course. And my personal favorite, and Jesse will love this, William Nylander. Hey. Of course. Yep. And 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 listen, there are more names and, and they're gonna follow more people. But the fact that after the the catastrophe, which was the Leafs, whatever the Amazon Leafs series was, because the all Leafs or would not allow them all or nothing, would not allow them to use 70% of the footage that they shot. Oh. What you saw was a a, a at just a thin little thread of what the Leafs PR would allow out. 
I love this for the league because the Leafs can't control it. As much as I love the Toronto Maple Leafs, they have way <laughs> too much control and, on this sort of stuff. You need to let fans in. This is the this is the new age. This is what you have to do. Drama matters. Mm -hmm. Drama, of course, drama matters. And here's the thing: drama matters like to people that maybe are so so on the game. Yeah, I like hockey. What what if you could turn like we're already hardcore fans. We built our careers around this. What if you could turn some not hardcore fans into hardcore fans? Mm -hmm. How about this? You're worried about putting out fires. Like people are worried about getting radioed and people are worried about like a like a quote getting out there. Um, how about you don't have one of the most catastrophic playoff losses in your team's history? And explain it away. And then it you're positive, 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 positive. It's obviously not positive, guys. So you're just letting everyone's imaginations run wild. Mm -hmm. Why not just be like Here's the ugly truth. Yeah. So and here what, it is. What, what Steve is talking about is at the end of the All or Nothing series, the Leafs lose again. And from there in the show, there's no drama for them being upset at losing, for them being sad. None of the consequences for losing. It kind of just ends on, you know what? It we'll ends try with again. Jack Campbell crying. We'll try again no. next year, and they're a little disappointed. No, it ends with um, um, Sheldon Keefe and Brandon Pridham and Kyle Dubas in Kyle's shitty office. Yes. The office is shitty. I'm sorry, it's it shitty. is. It's a shitty office. And they're throwing magnets against the board of who's going to be in the, who the lines are next year. That's how it ends. It, well, let's Bart, fucking the, try it and, again. And no, no, no recognizing that, hey, this is where we aired. Mm -hmm. No sit down of, hey, we didn't, we didn't do this right or we didn't do this enough or we're really disappointed. They didn't even say that. It's so crazy because like you'll see full swing. You'll see uh, what's the tennis one? It's good, too. No, it's not. It's, you don't get, like it's getting canceled. No. <laughs> oh, I liked it. I no, it, really it was good. it was very poorly. Oh, well, well poorly I enjoyed received. it. How yeah. about, um, how about um, that dry. moment heading into Game Seven uh, with Mitch Marner? Where, hey, Mitch, are you okay? Yes, said Mitch. Obviously not okay. All right. Proceeds to go out there and lose Game Seven. Th that's all we got. Yeah. Surely that's not all there was. No, no, it wasn't. But the Leafs, the Leafs, here's the thing. The Leafs not having control over this is the best thing for the NHL because here's what's happening. Mm -hmm. You're seeing every other sport doing it. You're seeing, like, look at the growth of, of uh, the PGA. Man, they caught the live PGA merger on that freaking show. How crazy is that? Crazy. They caught that. The drama around that is, in, like, this season is so good. Where does that rank in terms of the biggest stories in the history of golf? Might be one of the biggest in the history of sport. Yeah. And 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 most consequential too. And you look at you look at how little we know about how the NHL operates. You go back and, then, and again, it's the drive to survive model for Formula One. Formula One is not in three American races today if it isn't for that Netflix show. Mm -hmm. They're not in Vegas. They're not in Miami. They would do the circuit of the Americas in, in Austin, Texas, and that'd be it. And and so I look at this and I go, everybody else is doing it. These teams are resisting it, and the dam is about to burst. Because if Gary is saying it's about damn time, then you know it's going to happen. Bet and and once it happens, these players are ready to explode. These guys have great personalities. Oh, Gary Bettman is like, hey, guys, we're not being forward thinking enough. <laughs> That's like, outrageous. Come on, man. Now, here, I want to play a fantasy game with you guys. Um, what? Is it, definitely is not it fantasy a, hockey. No, no, really? not fantasy <laughs> hockey. Not fantasy is, it, is it adult fantasy hockey or little, little kids? It's wow. Mickey Mouse. Wow. Well, okay. Hey, now. Jesse, you want a participation ribbon? <laughs> All of us get one. First thing is uh, scratch Jack Hughes. No. <laughs> what would you let Ian tell, uh, Ian tell him kick your ass in a trade? <laughs> <laughs> Number one. I mobbed him. How dare you? Number one, but places don't matter. <laughs> Everybody's number one. Dangle Navy <laughs> League, everybody. We you know all what? win. You know what? You're getting in. You're getting in. I'm going to be Brad Marchand I about this. You're, you're going to get it. You're about to get it. Okay. Hey, do, you, do you guys keep score? Yeah. <laughs> you keep score. <laughs> You guys, by the way, score. that's for all of you dangle Navy guys, too. I'm just wondering what yeah. if you don't if you don't make the playoffs or if you don't have to make the playoffs, what's the point of keeping? Score? Why, why do you guys even play the regular why season? Play? Why? Why not start yeah. in April? Just why don't you guys start this week? Yeah, that could be the can, start of your season. Makes great. a lot of sense. Sarcast ball the STP <laughs> episode. How dare you? <laughs> Could you imagine? The NHL is like 32 teams make the playoffs. I mean, what the fuck is the point of watching 82? All right, Steve, go ahead. <laughs> they did that. 
It was called the 2020 playoffs. True. The true. Leafs lost anyway. True. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? We're that talking like about five minutes Gary ago. Bettman being forward thinking. Oh, you want to play a game. Mm-hmm. And I want to do a fantasy. fantasy game. Yeah. What would you do with $433 million? $433 million? Mm-hmm. What would you do? Well, I might. I might renovate the Caps Arena. Right. Um, not enough. It isn't, it isn't enough. <laughs> Ted but, uh, Leonsis would kick you out of the yeah. door. No, it's enough for if you're Ted. It's enough. $433 million. For no! him, it's enough. You'd have $100 million left over. No, he wants more. <laughs> he needs $800. It's all from the taxpayers. Wait a minute. They agreed to give me 433 which rounding up, they should have gave me $500. Ah, so I'm, I'm gonna, upset. Yeah. I'm dead. I, I'd oh. rather be in Maryland, I said ra- nobody. Brother. Baltimore Capital. Oh, Jesse, what no. would you do with four hundred thirty-three million? Uh, I don't know. What would I do for it? Yeah. What would, well, what would you that? do with? No, with it, not for it. I don't want to know what horrible uh, things. You I do would do for horrible it. things yeah, oh, for it. No. Um, but yeah, no, I, I probably. You know what I would do? buy a sports car and then I don't know. Fuck the, off every forever. day. <laughs> do you think yep. it's enough to buy the London Knights? Yes. Oh my God, four hundred. Yes. Like how much? How much? I think they're that? fifty million. That, no, London Knights would be fifty million. If I wanted to buy, the, I think it'd be like a hundred. When you buy the London Knights, you're buying London, right? Like you're buying, you're literally buying connections to every major business there, uh, every major major governmental apparatus. That team is like, weird. I'd take a hundred and fifty of that and give it to the owners of the London Knights, and it's mine now. Now wait, you would wait. pick the hunters out of London? I don't know, man. I that's what I'm saying. It's gonna cost more than fifty yeah, million dollars. Right, I gotta yeah, give them right. 150. No, right. wait, guys, I have great news. Oh, okay. I have great news. What's up? Because you're budgeting right now. Yeah. What happens if I gave you four hundred thirty three million dollars every year for twelve years? What? What would you do with it? What? I'd buy all the teams. You'd buy all the teams? I want I want Oshawa next. Yep. I want the Sioux. You just buy the OHL. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You might have money left over for the Q and the dub. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I will say this. 2016 was the last time I could say that the franchises in the O were valued. Mm-hmm. What was the highest ranked team at that time? Vancouver Giants. No, OHL. Oh, OHL. Sorry. London Knights. Not London Knights. Oh. Guess another. I don't know. Uh, who the hell if it's not the, the Steelheads? London? Kitchener I, Rangers? Believe it or not, the Steelheads are ranked second on that. Oh, oh shut up. But the uh, 67? No, that's because that's oh, uh, the location? valuations, right? Yeah, that's evaluation. Yeah, I assume the London Knights haven't been evaluated for their price because they haven't been but I would ass- up for sale. For You're sale. right. But yeah. I would assume that I would assume that the London Knights, if they were $23 million back then, they're probably worth triple that now. Oh, now, $100 million, Now, Yeah? Yeah. So $433 million Yep. Every year for 12 years. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. That's so much money. That's a lot of money. That's, that's so much. I could never... <laughs> humanly spend no. that much is it, money. Is it Canadian dollars that you're talking about? I No, I think it's American. Okay, so it's 433 American dollars. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Million American. Why Why do you ask, Steve? Well, because that adds up to $5.2 billion. Oh. So, so think of all the stuff you would do with $5.2 billion. It's still not enough money to get a reporter on the bench during a game <laughs> in Canada. <laughs> Did they? Are they not allowed to? I don't know if they're not allowed to, but they TSN don't. Does. TSN does. Mike Johnson. Do Mike Johnson's between the. No, benches. he's between the. Bench. No, no, yeah, no. I'm talking no, about talking Michael on the bench yeah. in Rod Brindamore's face. Well, like, I, think, I see it all the time. Yeah. I, I honestly, I have to say, I think that that if I were Rogers, I'd be down Gary's neck about that investment. Like, mm-hmm. why? Why am I not getting this stuff? But yeah. from what I've heard, it's the other way around, where the NHL goes, "No, you're going to do it this way," mm. but. If that's true, then Rogers is probably like, okay, Gary, we're trying to interview these people and they won't let us. No. Could have bought Star Wars. Like, I'm, Star I'm, Wars. Not, I'm not going to make it a. That's crazy. They could have bought Star Wars or NHL hockey. So, what would you have done with $5.2 billion? Star Wars. <laughs> Buy Star Wars. Yeah. And Indiana oh. Jones. And Indiana Jones. That's you, part of the franchise. Yeah, like a bunch of uh, toys. No, the concept. I own Star and Wars. And all of its properties. The IP. Disney paid less. For like the idea of Star Wars. Hey, you want to interview? Ho- and Rogers paid for hockey. Hey, you want to interview a coach on the bench for like the eighth most popular sport in the continent? Mm-hmm. Nope. Or own Can't Darth Vader? Which or one own <laughs> Darth Vader? Do you want to spend billions on a shitty trilogy <laughs> that <laughs> makes money anyway because yeah. nothing matters because that's how big you are? Mm-hmm. No. 
Or you get told by PR that you can't do that. Or do, or do you... It's it, it's not enough to get Kyle Bukaskis on the bench to ask <laughs> Sheldon Keefe how the second line's doing. You know what it is? We figured like, it out. The coaches don't want to stand next to Bukaskis because they don't want it pointed out how ugly they are. He's, fi- I, I, he's a handsome dude. He's so ridiculously handsome. Yeah. Best hair in hockey. Oh, yeah. He's six. In hockey media. He's about 6'3", six, 6'5", six, when you account for the hair. And, like, <laughs> and kind. And young. Yeah. Always says hi. Always is like, hey, man, how's it going? What's going on with you? Ask you about you. Can you imagine? Annoying. Can you imagine grumpy old Sheldon Keefe talking to him? It, uh, would be, it would be like sunshine and rain shower. You would have to. You, Sheldon Keefe would have to talk to the team trainer after the interview because he'd be craning his neck. <laughs> uh, Sheldon like Keefe is regular dude size. <laughs> Kyle Bukaskis is big and handsome. One last story I'd like to hit before we, uh, we go to um, question period here, uh, press conference. Uh, Jesse, I sent you this. Um, and it is a huge uproar in Finland. Now, oh. this story is unlike anything I've ever heard before. I think this is unlike anything we've seen in hockey. I don't think I can play this. You can't play it. But, just yeah. try to fast forward to the one spot. Where, now, if we can do just before. It's there's quite grainy footage. It's, but yes. Listen, it's the Finnish league. I don't know. Um, so <laughs> if you're what you're looking at there is a hit being thrown, and there is an orange dot behind the glass. That orange dot is a mascot. He's a team mascot for this particular team. And it looks as though uh, he's leaning against the glass. Now, um, the it's Tapara's mascot. Tapara. Tapara. And he was accused of injuring an opposing player by leaning on the glass when the glass, <laughs> when he hit the glass. Look at his face. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Tintin. It looks like he just like set a house on fire yeah. for arson and ran away. <laughs> he looks like the honeybee. You know what I mean? The honeybee mascot? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, <laughs> actually, you funny. know what? I could see that that mascot being in a horror movie for sure. Like, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's funny. And also, he has no pupils in his eyes. They're just black. Yeah, eyes. that's why it's so scary. And no teeth. Um, Every mascot in Europe is terrifying. So, um, anyway, uh, so this was... <laughs> I just thought this was a really interesting story. So mascot leaning against the glass. Now, Steve, you've done a little investigating. Am, am I allowed to disclose this? Or are you allowed to disclose this? I don't this? think so. You're not allowed no, to disclose this? No. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. You're now, not, the no, team and ours. the mascot are denying it, but there is an inquiry. There is an inquiry. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and for this isn't our story to tell. No, no, like no, no, no. Oh, I thought it was Steve's story to tell. I'm sorry. No, 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 my bad. No, no, no. My bad. If it's we not, have, then it's not. Listen, no. we have our best people on the case. Yeah. Okay. Put it, put it <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Fair enough. But uh, watch for the story. Mm-hmm. Also, like, I, this has been, it's, it's a way to talk about something that's bothered me uh, for a long time at sporting events. What? When a player, it, well, sporting events, hockey, because this is, I mean, you can't, this can't happen at soccer. It can't happen at basketball. There's glass. And because there's a barrier between fans and players, fans are like, oh, I could just beat the shit out of that barrier, not knowing that there's consequences to it. So the, the glass has give, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Even when it was a chain link fence instead of glass, there was give. It wasn't great, but there was more than someone probably like a 200 pound human being plus the suit leaning against the glass and then you take a professional hockey check against that glass you might as well be getting smashed into a concrete wall yeah so you ever see when players are in a puck battle and their like faces are leaned up against the glass and then people smack the glass (laughs) automatic ejection for me from the arena for the fan yeah the, the part of your ticket is not uh, physical access to the players. Mm. What are you doing? And I know you're not physically touching them, but I don't know. For some reason, that's always bothered me. Yeah, because if it's if it's wobbly and you're hitting this side, it is hitting them. You're just if you're strong enough. There was there was a really I don't remember what building it was in, but it was Joffrey Lupo, and he's got his face up against the glass, and he's just getting like punched <laughs> during a hockey game that counts mm-hmm. by an opposing fan. And I've always thought that's crazy. Mm-hmm. No, I, that, I think that's a really good point. It's something that people don't think about as a fan, especially if you're an adult, like a kid. If you're banging against the glass, ah, it doesn't kids matter. Fine, you're not that. affecting anything. But if you're a grown ass man and you're banging on this yes! glass, and another person's face is right there, don't do that. Yes, yeah, I agree. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great point, Steve. Kids are going to be kids. Also, but- they mm-hmm. notice that they have digital boards rather than the the ones that are like 
Oh, carbon cut or whatever that the NHL does that they were, you know, remember, you know, that the digital board. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. You do. Know I, know, I know. They actually have real digital boards. That's that one's got to be expensive. I think uh, I'm just triggered from my time at the zoo. Stop touching that. People shaking the cages and shit. Why do people do that? I don't fuck. They're that. animals. What are you doing? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't. Let's antagonize this tiger. What, yeah. What could go wrong? Here's this tiger who totally wants to be here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Who's like, <laughs> who totally wants to have his cage shook? They're jacked about it. Yeah, I bet, yeah. I bet they're pumped. Like, what do you guys ridiculous. think about Harambe? Let's no, bring that that's up. Not- that's a relevant topic. <laughs> okay, I need a, I need Maddie Mike for this. This is important. All right. Because. Oh, no. We, no, don't, don't play this game now. <laughs> what is this? No? It's a VIP game. Oh, you know what? Told you. VIP game. We're going to save it because. Oh, oh, come no, on. No, it is a VIP I know game. I'm going with this. Okay, no, fine. You know Harambe. Okay, I just no. need her to answer Harambe. the question. Yeah. Yeah. You know about 13. Harambe? You were 13 yeah. for Harambe. Yeah. Man, there were some big songs for Harambe. Like some that Wasn't charted. that the era where, like, what does the fox say? Yeah, that oh, was the, that was, yeah. a, that was not was great. Was it dicks out for Harambe? Dicks out that for Harambe. That was a song. <laughs> what, what was the one? <laughs> the guy, he was, like, wearing red. And he, I don't know if somebody broke into like a house and they did the remix of that song. I don't know if I'd know that one. Good oh job, man. Gosh, I forget. But he's no. wearing red and broke into a house. Is he the yeah. Kool-Aid jug? No, I'll, I'll, I'll forget. It. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. I can't. Just, <laughs> I can picture it in my head. Right. No, we need to uh, VIP episodes. Uh, does Maddie know about? The, followed yeah. Followed by blank. Yeah. Uh, man, so much fun this week. And it can way. work in reverse. Uh, you should sign up for a VIP, by the way. Uh, let's do the press conference. <laughs> I love that you always dance. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. Harambe. No, I couldn't. I couldn't find it. Oh, yeah. No, I think I got it. Uh, uh, Yeah, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up on the VIP. I know exactly what song I'm thinking about. All right, let me get the questions. You guys are acting like we're recording one today. Yeah, is it up? for, for it next is up. Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, it was a good episode. I enjoyed it. Want to listen to it? The, vi- the VIP? Yeah, I think everybody who's out there right now should uh, definitely subscribe mm-hmm. and listen to it. Yeah, um, it's actually... Just a bonus full-ass episode of the SDP. You can do that by going to the link in the description of this show, whether you're on YouTube or on Apple or Spotify. The link is there to your preferred platform, and you can subscribe to SDP VIP. Uh, this is from Dill Pickle. Dill Pickle writes, there is something on our Discord. Go to svn.ca to join us on Discord. There is something going around the hockey Twitter community, and it's who is your favorite player on these franchises? So my question for you is, for you three is, who is your favorite Leaf who played for the Bruins? Oh, I like this game. That's Mm -hmm. a good game. I like that. Ooh. Oh, Felix Potvin. Although I don't mm. like to admit he ever played there. He did play there. Did he play well there? I don't remember. Maybe he was just a, uh, a double agent. He always played well. Well. He did. How do you do in Vancouver? Well. It's Felix <laughs> Potvin. <laughs> I'm thinking the only one I can the only one I can actually think of is like Coverley. And he won the cup, but he didn't play well there. Can I give you a sneaky answer? Give me. Brian Leach. Brian Leach. Okay, that's my favorite Leaf who played for Boston. Man, that made me so angry. I loved Brian Leach. They had him. They traded for him. They had him for another full year, and that year was the 0405 season where there were no games because contract, of the full season lockout. Contract should have carried over. I loved Brian Leach and Brian McCabe. The Bryans. The Bryans. Uh, JVR is a good oh, answer. Yeah. Oh, that's good one answer. of my faves. One. Still Brian Leach. Good one. Um, Joe Thornton. Joe Thornton is a fun one, but I think I'm going to side with my final answer. Noel Achari. Noel Achari. <laughs> all time. <laughs> my favorite leave all time. Sure. Who played for the Boston Bruins. All right. I didn't know that. Noel Achari. Yeah, he's like four. That's where he started his career. Pretty Did sure. he beat the Leafs in 2011? Uh, Let's look at no, it was 2013. 2013. Uh, no, no, he no. beat the Leafs in 2018. Uh, now yeah. I have to hate him again. I believe. Noel yeah, Achari Noel, was a great Noel and Achari was on the uh, Bruins from 2015 through 2019. He was uh, one of two Bruins to show up to St. Louis after that cup final and go, hey, him and Tori Krug. 
<laughs> hey, sorry about all that stuff. This is yeah. from Winter Soldier 31. Stump the Steve. Oh. How many Gordy Howe hat tricks does Gordy Howe how have? I am pretty sure the answer is two. Two. Final answer. Final answer. Two is correct. Well done. Let's go. Because well it done. came up recently. Yeah. Yeah. What doesn't like Rick Tockett have like 40 or something stupid <laughs> like that? Should we call the Rick Tockett actor? It should be. Yeah. yeah no, he less uh, of a ring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah f- fewer uh I don't know how he only managed to have two. I guess no one wanted to fight him. <laughs> well, I can't blame them. Yeah. No, he was quite large. Last thing we'll end on. Actually, we might do two things, but uh, one thing we're going to do here is we're going to do a game of who he play for. Yes. Oh, I love this game. I gotta, and is it Fix Somethington? Uh, what was that oh, guy's name? From, from Columbus? Oh, it, thank you. Who is a Cleveland? Dude, you should have said him because I wouldn't have got it. Somebody texted me like, hey, he is a Cleveland Monsters legend. Whoa. Um, oh, no. Yeah. Anyway. So is Kevin Shattenkirk. Is he? Yeah, I know that because uh, I have, for some reason, a piece of... I, I have a game-used jersey card of Kevin Shattenkirk with the Cleveland Monsters. All right. <laughs> I don't know why. I think I'm going to go with this guy. Do it. First name, mm. Riker. Last name, Evans. Riker Evans. <laughs> oh, All right. Geez. Jesse, no. this is important for yeah. the conversation. Yeah. Is he from Western Canada? <laughs> Riker Evans is from Calgary, Alberta. <laughs> Man, you could smell that. It, it was it wow. Was, nothing has ever been more obvious. Is Gary Bettman a lawyer? Yeah. He wow. Riker Evans could also be like from somewhere in the belt between Minnesota and Connecticut. Yes. Yep. But great hair. Yeah. Great but, flow. But Western Canada. Yep. Riker Evans. Play for <laughs> the who he play for. I'm my instincts for some reason are telling me Dallas Stars, mm-hmm. and I will say Chicago Blackhawks. You guys locking those in? Locking it in. Locking it. Riker Evans is a defenseman for the Seattle Kraken. Damn! Wow. <laughs> oh, that tracks. Why? That tracks. Why? Because Seattle. <laughs> Riker is a very Seattle name. It could also be a Seattle name. Is, are you sure <laughs> it tracks? Yeah, even though he's from Calgary. Uh, the one thing about Riker Evans, though, is he does not have immaculate flow, uh, which you would assume I from his pretty name. Good flow. It's decent, but I don't like, I'm not saying this is immaculate Minnesota hockey. No, flow. no you're right. This he, isn't that. That's it's not Riker flow. Evans. That looks like an Evan Riker. Right. Yeah. He looks like an Evan, right? <laughs> all right, Jesse. I believe right, he's an last, Evan. Last, last thing, one. since we're playing all of our favorite games of all time. That was we need. <laughs> I love this game. We need to play a game of our NHL.com headlines. Oh! So we had a who he play for, and now we have NHL.com headlines. This is the caption on this headline. The great one passed Mr. Hockey on NHL all-time goal list. 30 years ago. Wow. It's a g- fabulous headline. His 802nd goal to pass Gordy. How he do that? <laughs> <laughs> or how'd he do it? Because <laughs> it's how, you see. How? Oh. What? Uh, how about that? No. No. I was also thinking because how's number was, was it nine? It was nine, right? Wayne to remember. No, stop it. (laughs) (laughs) That's the one. All right, Jesse, you got to Wayne to remember. I'm going to let me hold on. Let me pull up NHL.com. I do like that. I do like that. Steve, you're going to be so upset. No! No! Answer. You yes. did not get it. Woo! You did not Big get up. it. Isn't Man. that you had it? Man, you this is a good Friday. 
This is a good Friday for me, and that's supposed to be next Friday. Steve, I beat you at trivia, and then I beat you at this? Adam, you didn't say how about that. I Didn't I say that? No, Steve said how about... You said... Um, uh, something along. So you said how something something. But oh, Steve I thought said, it said how about that. No, Steve oh, said how about that and then moved off after because you gave the how part and Steve had it. No, you were a lot closer. Than yeah, you oh, were right sorry, there. I forget Steve. your. What was I thought? Maddie, you, what was his exact answer? I forget how you Who, phrased Steve? it. Adams. Adams. It was like uh, how uh, how he play for or something. Yeah. <laughs> how, <laughs> how you play <laughs> for? <laughs> how you do that? I think we'll that. check the yeah, tapes. Yeah, but do. Adam, you were slightly off. Ah. Steve went off of your answer and said it, and then oh, was like, "No." Gretzky underrated flow. Look at that. Oh yeah. He also you, good curls too back in the day. Do you want a preview of me in the car the entire way home? You're gonna be mad. No. Adam, you don't remember your own answer. I don't remember my own answer. Are you surprised? <laughs> Are you surprised? No. I got no. so excited. It's pretty consistent. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever been more rattled. You, I don't think you've ever gotten it a headline first, exact. First Jack Hughes, now this. Like, how much more can I take? How much more can I take? I love it. All right. Listen, we hope you have a fantastic weekend. We'll be back Monday. Woohoo! Zach Wayne Hyman's pretty goals. Hmm? What? What's Zach Hyman's Wayne, highlighting? Way to remember. <laughs> Wayne, <do> you remember? <laughs> Gord Metal. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.